Welcome to The Horror Hangout, a podcast where film fans watch the best and worst horror movies and talk about them. My name is Ben Errington and I'm joined by a regular co-host, Mr. Andy Conduit Turner. Hello, Ben, and indeed everybody. How are you all doing? Hello to everybody out there. And today we are joined by a very, very special guest. Uh, PJ Montgomery is a writer and podcaster from Wales. He is the writer of the graphic novelization of Steve Jackson's The Troll Tooth Wars. Uh, and he features regularly on several podcasts, including the JLA cast with last week's guest, John Locke, uh, Measure of a Fan, a Star Trek retrospective and safe space from Lawbreaker Radio. Welcome to the show, PJ. Hello, thank you very much for having me. I am delighted. To, well, no, I was delighted to be here, then I watched the film. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! The delight, but... Ah, well, we'll see. Delighted. We'll see if we can't use the traditional horror hangout um, magic, PJ, whereby <laughs> my rating either goes up or down by a letter. Usually, by the time we've talked about it for an hour or so, so we'll see if that if see if that affects okay. you. Okay. Because mm. well, I mean, there's a we... lot of deep themes in this in this film we're going to talk about today. Deep something. <laughs> uh well we're delighted to have you on the show pj um also when when it comes to we did mention fairly recently andy didn't we that we don't actually talk about that many bad films on this show like we did mention the tag the whole tagline is we talk about the best and worst horror movies of all time and talk about them um but there aren't that many stinkers so in a way i'm kind of happy that there's a You're bit fulfilling of a the prophecy you haven't had to really lay into something since you absolutely declared war on the makers of demonic years ago a couple of years ago <laughs> declared war did i i don't remember yeah. that but uh i obviously I got it out of my system and every to quote you exactly to quote you exactly i'm not slagging this film off it's just that no one in it is any good oh yeah i do remember that and you know what people are people are good at something they're doing something in this film you know yeah. bruce campbell's doing something that's not really Bruce Campbell, but you know, it's still a thing. Um, yeah, we'll we will get into it. There's a lot, <laughs> there's a hell of a lot, hell of a lot to cover. Um, has anyone seen this film before? I hadn't. I hadn't even heard of it until until you invited me on the show. Andy, is it your choice? Was your, yeah, was I, this film I, your choice? I made this happen, and I'll tell you the history. Then I remembered it, and I distinctly remember a harrowing scene. We'll co- call later where. Um, a hybrid corpse slash bits of machinery break into a tent on the moon with a dead man's face on it. Um, I remember that distinctly um, after my parents rented this film out for me from the video shop, like a standard Saturday. Oh, we go to the video shop after you swimming lesson. Do you want to get a film out? Yeah, this one. I'm trying to work it out and I'll never be able to work it out exactly. I wasn't keeping full record, didn't have a letterbox to count in the late 80s, early <laughs> 90s. But I reckon I must have had this rented out from when I was eight, nine. Oh, wow. Introduced I'm assuming about to... eight, yeah. Okay, okay. And then, so PJ, you, didn't, you weren't even aware this film existed, despite the fact it stars um, what's his flavour? Walter, Walter Koenig. Check of himself. Koenig. Yeah, well, check of himself. Yeah, you know, he was in a much better science fiction film in 1989, a little thing called Star Trek V: The Final Frontier. So <laughs> that kind okay. of took up the the broadband in my in my head. Yeah. <laughs> was okay, at any so... point in Star Trek V: The Final Frontier was check of at any point lured to a trap on the moon? No, but it is the one that features the great Captain Kirk line: "Excuse me, but what does God need with a starship?" So it wins. <laughs> I mean, did you do any pre- did you do any press ups in, in that <laughs> film as well? Uh, deleted scene, I think that was. Yeah. Deleted yeah, scene. Just yeah. really doing loads of press ups with his son, and then we will mentions get... the mum, but snogs a woman later anyway. I don't know. <laughs> They're definitely split up. They're definitely yeah, it was, split it up. Was, that was a divorce. That was definitely we a need... child of divorce. We will get into it, of course, but we do need to mention how hairy uh, Walter's arms are. In that scene, because he's given he is given Robin Williams a run for his money. Robin Williams, when I see his forearms, I always forget, and then I'm reminded that I'm like, that is insane. That is insanely hairy. Um, <laughs> but who's got the hairy shoulders as well? That guy, he's I think he's in Alien Resurrection. There's a there's a scene where there's a guy with hairy shoulders. There's a man that's very Alien hairy Resurrection. shoulders. <laughs> I think you have to be quite hasute to be a successful space traveler because it's very cold in space. 
insulation. Yeah. So it wasn't. I mean, a pretty a pretty strong 1989 then for Walter. How do you say his surname? Koenig. Koenig. Okay. So a pretty strong 1989 then. All in all, would you say? I mean, yeah, he was in one of the worst Star Trek films in this. So. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. It can only it can only get better from there. Uh, have we got any horror news to jump straight into before we? Uh, I say that I I'm the person who has the answer to that question. I'm yeah, just, well, ben, I, I put I'm, that question to you. Go on then, do it, do it. Um, tell you what, Ben, you come asking me about horror news when you point one thing, you got to look at those three pointing back at yourself. Oh yeah. Um, not sure if that was Captain Kirk or Trisha Goddard that said that, but <laughs> nevertheless, I put the question to you. Have you got any horror news this week? <laughs> Trisha Goddard. I am I'm lying. I actually, I absolutely know for a fact that it's Trisha Goddard. I feel like that's Trisha a Goddard niche reference that. these days. I tell you what, if you want niche British daytime TV references, come I mean, you me. come to the right bright. <laughs> well, come, come to Andy. Come to Andy. He's got he's got them all going on. Um, so. I mean, actually, before we get into our news, should we talk a little bit uh, about your podcast, MPJ? Because obviously, we had John on the show last week, and because we because we discussed the Toxic Crusaders game mostly, we didn't really get a chance to talk about podcasts and stuff like that. So, it's probably yeah, a good, good chance to do it. Sure, um, I'll try and keep it brief. So, the JLA cast, John and I, uh, well, it started as us. We both were and are huge fans of the Grant Morrison run on the JLA book in the 90s. So it just started as us deep diving into that an issue at a time uh, on a fortnightly basis. And then we finished the Grant Morrison run on JLA, and now we're just sort of skipping around the DC universe, covering other things mm. um, sort of that were going on at the same time. So we've just, we're just finishing a JLA Paradise Lost, which was a Mark Miller miniseries that came out early on in the Morrison oh, nice. run. And then we're going to move on to JLA Year One by Mark Wade. But yeah, it's just an excuse for John and I to sit there and talk about how the '90s was better than now. So... Anything was everything in the '90s was only pretend grim. Yeah, it wasn't grim. It was extreme. That's yeah. X hyphen Treem. <laughs> it sure was. <laughs> Just those extreme days. Yeah. Uh, and then I've got The Measure of a Fan, where um, myself and a friend of mine, Matt Troy, stand-up comedian, uh, are introducing my brother, the musician Elliot Red, to the joys of Star Trek one episode at a time, but in chronological order. So we've started with Star Trek Enterprise, and Elliot is hating it. We've nearly finished the fourth season of Enterprise, so we're having fun. Um, and do you do like an episode, an episode, <laughs> episode show? a week? Episode yeah. a week we're doing at the moment. Um, so yeah, as I say, we're about halfway through the final season of Enterprise, and then we're going to finally move on to what some people would call good Star Trek. So chronologically, I'm showing my ignorance here. Will that go to original recipe Star Trek from there? Oh, Andy, you have asked a question. Uh, okay. <laughs> so where do we go after we finished Enterprise? He goes Enterprise, uh, and then we've got... Um, they released a load of short treks a few years ago, which were all right over the timeline. So we've got a few of those. Pirate episode of the original series. <laughs> then the first two seasons of Star Trek Discovery. Then the first few seasons of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Then we get the original series. So we'll get, but you're in good Star Trek soon because that Star Trek that you're about to watch is good Star Trek. Well, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the first season of Discovery, but I think my brother will really like it because he's a lot younger than me and he likes that modern television. Awesome. That sounds great. Uh, I'm I'm so poor at Star Trek. I know one episode of Star Trek Voyager, which I've seen several times. <laughs> <laughs> which one's that uh the one which is the story about the scorpion and the fox cut a long story short they both died but the moral is instinct nature it's commander chakotay and his animal stories yeah, yeah. that's the one i know <laughs> the famous animal stories yeah scorpion i think the episode was called yeah yeah pj what what is your relationship with horror then is it mainly is it sort of mainly sci-fi that you enjoy or do you, are you would you call yourself a big horror fan as well i i do love horror not as much as my wife she's the big horror fan in the relationship like i think she's completed shudder so oh, oh yeah you know there it is but oh, i do love a good horror film um sci-fi horror like two of my absolute favorites are the thing and alien so um yeah i do really love a good sci-fi horror but i'm also partial to um folk horror like the witch is just mm. one of my absolute favorite films and then 
sort of all your gothic horrors like the the old universal stuff and then the 50s your hammer stuff as well that sort of did some of the gothic folklore stuff which um yeah so i'm always a big fan of your draculas and your frankensteins and that sort of thing as well that's those are really folk horror gothic horror sci-fi horror are my my jams and also when when you get sort of horror in something that's not normally horror like when Star Trek would just randomly pull out a horror themed episode or when a show that you're watching just oh, wow, goes, oh yeah. here's a vampire all of a sudden. You know, things like that. Yeah. I was a big fan of that horror just crashing into other things. Mm. Now, PJ, my dossier is misrepresenting you, but you're a Godzilla man as well, right? You I am? A bit of... Yes. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Love the Kaiju movie. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think is that's it... where I suddenly thought, oh, I should ask PJ on sometime. I think it's when, now this will be going a few years back now, when we did... Um, Shin Godzilla, and I think I spoke to you about it, and I thought, oh, okay, mm. this is a guy we should get on in the future. He knows about a Shin Godzilla. I do know about Shin Godzilla, but I am more of a Showa era, the first run of the films, I think is my my favourite. It's like, I love Ebera, Horror of the Deep, uh, Invasion of the Astro Monster, Destroy All Monsters is amazing. And Destroy Channel All Monsters Mecha is, Godzilla, yeah. yeah, some of my favourites. I also love for the best tag team match and in any format of any medium, Godzilla versus Megalon, of course. Yes. <laughs> oh, Jet Jaguar! Wow, <laughs> what a guy! Talking of talking of horror in Star Trek, then are there any are there any particular episodes that you would recommend as as having those horror elements? Uh, two. One is uh, the original series. I want to say it's called Cat's Paw, and it actually aired on Halloween in uh, 1967, I think. Um, and it was written by Robert Block, who wrote Psycho. Um, oh, wow, and okay. the Enterprise turns up at a gothic horror planet, and there's witches and uh, a vampire and all this stuff. But then obviously it turns out to be aliens using devices to mind control them. And yeah, it's it's really fun, really, really creepy. And then the other one is an episode of The Next Generation, which is... Is it a recommendation? People should definitely watch it. It's called Sub Rosa, and it's the one where Dr. Crusher starts having sex with a space ghost. Ah, oh, space ghost. They are yeah. they are sexy. Well, it was her grandmother's lover first, and then she starts boffing it after her grandmother dies. And it's wow. one of the worst episodes of Star Trek of all time, but it's also amazing. I don't know how I feel about any sort of... Uh sex act with a ghost. I always felt a bit strange about when Dan Aykroyd... With your grand's ex as well. <laughs> I always felt a bit strange when Dan Aykroyd was clearly getting... Uh... Yeah. Getting a gobby off that ghost. And... <laughs> I, I knew if I just left a gap for you, you were going to fill it with a gobby. Yeah. And that's probably the worst language I could have possibly used <laughs> to describe that. But I just could have said being gonna, noshed off by a ghost this. or I was gonna say do you know what? Noshed off was the first thing I was gonna say, but in a way <laughs> I was a bit like, Oh, is that too crude? But yeah, uh, even even watching that as a kid, I was a bit like, Oh, that's horrible. Especially if ghosts, you know, as we see in the canon of Ghostbusters, if they even touch you a little bit, you get all slimed. Well, someone's getting slimed. <laughs> <It's... Yeah. laughs> Mutually oh. assured sliming going oh, on there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, th th that ghost is pretty good at it as well from um, Dan Aykroyd's facial um, expression. That's right. I said expression. After <laughs> might that. be extracting his soul. We don't know. We might be mistaking. Is that, that how you extract the soul? I'm not. I'm not familiar with extracting souls myself. Overly, I haven't done it before. But it's one way. I think. <laughs> Is it one way? Right, let's move on. Slurping it right let's out of there. Let's move hell. on before <laughs> we take it, take it one step too far. Okay, um, so horror news for this week. We've got a trailer for The Last Voyage of the... Say it again, Andy. Now, I would naturally say Demeter, but it might be Demeter. It's Demeter. Demeter, Demeter. there you go. It's Demeter, I'm glad. Knew if I'm we glad. got a scholar in, then we'd be able to we'd cover <laughs> exactly. it. It's a directly a film. I'm a big... I'm all there for it. Yeah, this is about our Dracula or summer. Uh, yes, yeah, so of course, that we've got a trailer for this, and you know what? Looks pretty good, I would say. Um, one of those trailers that I would so as a bit of a avoider of trailers these days, but I thought, check this one out because you really never know, do you? Um, so this is based on Bram Stoker's classic horror novel, novel Dracula, of course. Um, and the trailer gives us this first look at the this incarnation of the iconic bloodsucker and and of course unlike many adaptations that depict dracula as a human being this film is leaning into dracula being one of them big full-on bat monsters man bat 
type. Yeah, he's a big man bat. Thing. A big um, man bat. So this is, it's like a deleted scene from the book, right? So in the original novel of Dracula, mm. you you see an abandoned ship, like at the end of Lost World, Jurassic Park, except <laughs> instead of Tyrannosaurus is on there, it's only been a bloody Dracula on there. So when it comes into port, something terrible's happened on this voyage, mm. and everyone's been got by a Dracula. And now we've seen, and now this is the the story of this voyage. And I'm really interested in this because um, I've seen it presented. I have no indication that the same authors or anything to do with it. But 2016, I had to go back and look at it. There was a podcast I used to listen to, um, an Australian one called Movie Maintenance. And they used to look at stories and they would tell things, how they would do a retelling of a story. And there is one of the hosts on there, a writer called Sean Carney, his pitch for a Dracula movie was the last voyage of the Demeter. And they went through and said how they would cast it and the story they would tell. And going through that, it was just done for a bit of fun on a podcast, a nice bit of like short fiction. And they talk on there about the, um, you know, how who, how they would cast it and the, the main story beats they would go through. I thought it was a fantastic idea. I think they did it as like a, small production of a stage play as well i have no oh, nice. indication that this is anything to do mm. with it and this is that like i even I, I i was familiar enough with it that i thought i'd go and look to see if his name was on you know as a based on a short story by or like a, a writing credit and it doesn't appear to be there could be one of those incidental things that hollywood's picked up but as a result as soon as i saw this i was like yes this is a story i am into i'm super excited for this yeah mm. same i know the um the bbc dracula that a few years ago, Stephen Moffat and Mark Gattis did. They did it as the second episode was the Demeter. And that was the best episode of that series. It was a shame they never made a third episode of it. Yeah, shame it was cancelled <laughs> early. Because um, <laughs> I know that the, yeah. the novel you get like brief journal extracts from it, but they're really tantalising and you can yeah. do so much with it. And it's got Liam Cunningham in it and I love him. He's great. So yeah, I'm mm -hmm. very, very excited for this. Yeah, it, it looks great, and uh, yeah, the cast cast looks good. Um, so it's June, the, right? August the eleventh. August. Right. So so yeah, um, definitely looking forward to that. I'll check it out. I saw that BBC Dracula series as well, um, and yeah, I think I agree that that episode was the best one. And then it just it was just all a bit too Hollywood, wasn't it? That third episode. It wasn't um, third episode. What are you talking about? Yeah, I don't remember. Shame either. just ended you know, on that cliffhanger, really, wasn't it? it was... Yeah. Just come on and make another one. <laughs> um, okay, what other news have we got? So, Insidious, The Red Door is the official title, the horror franchise's fifth movie, which is getting which has been released this year, uh, July the 7th. In fact, I mean, I couldn't when I looked at this story, I couldn't even tell you that there were five Insidious movies, to be fair. Um, I've only seen the first one, but you know, is this something anybody's looking forward to? How do you feel about this, Andy? I can't see how many Insidious films I've seen. Maybe the first two? Couldn't tell you. I definitely lost track with them a while ago, though. Yeah. I mean, how insidious can these Insidious films get? So um, it's starring um, the Lamberts, <laughs> Josh Lambert and Dalton Lambert. So obviously uh, Josh Lambert played by Patrick um, Wilson. That's right, yeah. Um so he heads east to drop his son Dalton off at an idyllic ivy-covered university. I don't know why that's written in the synopsis. What did this university look like? I want to know. Is it, it was idyllic? They haven't got into the they haven't got into the prestigious Ivy League, so they just grow ivy on the thing, so they can get away with saying, <laughs> yeah. "Oh, it's an ivy-covered university." Is that Ivy League? Oh. Mm, couldn't possibly say legal reasons, but possibly it's in a league of uh, ivy. Yeah. <laughs> So Dalton's college dream becomes a nightmare when the repressed demons of his past suddenly return to haunt them both. And I'm, I'm assuming there's some sort of uh, red door involved. So is Dalton that's... is Dalton the wee boy that was like in the in the first one Ooh, that got take, taken question. to Darth Maul's house? It's a, it's a good question. I mean, the last the, the most recent one was the last key, which was in 2018. And I mean, I've kind of completely forgotten about them to be fair um but it's one of those franchises that always seems to to do decent numbers isn't it hence why we're getting a fifth a fifth sort of franchise one as well i think this this week as well i haven't got this down as official horror news but i think the conjuring is gonna be some type of series as well i i think i read i know there were a lot of hbo max announcements this week 
and I think one of them was that the conjuring there's going to be a conjuring TV show as well. I think they've they've got rid of the HBO bit. Apparently that's putting people off. They just HBO, called it that thing that people no. Max, they've just called the thing it where Max. you can watch all the HBO things. <laughs> they've just called it Max. Um, do you remember a channel called Sky Movie Max? Yes. <laughs> You do remember that? As long oh, as you have no follow-up questions, then yes, I remember, <laughs> I remember that. I remember that title. What was your favorite film on it? Uh, uh. Oh God! Yeah, that was that was like the the sort of older brother channel. You know, you had Sky Premiere where all of the like highbrow stuff and big Hollywood blockbusters and that were on. Then Sky Movie Max had all the slightly dodgy stuff. Not that is dodgy. It, is it, but, is it a know. bit like the the Marvel imprint, like Marvel Max, like you know, <laughs> where the Punisher will be shooting someone's face off and saying "fucking bugger." <laughs> <laughs> exactly like that um okay and finally the last bit of news we've got off the back of lots of announcements i guess um with hbo max is that amazon are reportedly looking to revive robocop as a friend uh the franchise with a potential tv series i guess this is relevant to what we're discussing today with um sort of like robots and body horror and stuff like that and then there's a video game that robocop rogue city which Apparently it's good. And this year as well, the Robo Doc documentary is heading to Screenbox also. So could be a decent year or a couple of years for, for fans of Robocop. Um how, what how were your collective feel feelings on the last on the last attempt to resurrect Robocop as a film series? It was awful, that's what. Oh yeah. I mean, I've definitely only ever seen it once, so I cannot tell you much about it. Um but yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't any good, was it? Was it? No, no. It was terrible. It was yeah. Utterly, utterly terrible. I don't remember it. Like almost worse than RoboCop three. <laughs> I need to rewatch RoboCop three. I was talking. I was discussing this recently. I don't don't remember anything about it. So, um, but yeah, TV series could could be pretty good. You know, I guess in the same sort of vein as. Um, oh, I was going to give you an example of a TV show. It could be similar to them, but it could vanished out of my out of my head. Who's the guy who plays Falcon, Andy? Oh, Anthony Mackie. That's it. Uh, that show that he was in. <laughs> uh, just... Something Carbon? Uh, car... Altered Carbon. I knew we'd get there. Um, potentially in the vein of that could work pretty well, I think. Um, I think that's been cancelled now, actually. Um, Altered Carbon, which is a shame. Um but yeah, that could that could work. And apparently, an eighty-two. What there was wasn't there an attempt to make this into a TV sh- a TV series? Apparently, there was an eighty-nine minute pilot which aired in two parts. Uh, back in ni- nineteen ninety-four. I'm sure. I'm aware it of like the kids series, there was I'm a render the kids friendly RoboCop series. There was, there was an animated series, but I think there was a live action series. It only lasted a season, but yeah. Oh, I remember yeah. watching both. Yeah, they were like both awful. I feel like it was in like the, it was in like the Baywatch slot, wasn't it? On like a mm. sort of late Saturday afternoon. He had a he had a friend who was a hologram, a lady hologram who'd appear in his car or something. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, I, I, but yeah, oh, the hologram I, car. I know, I'll give I'll give it a go. But a series is a big commitment these days. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, they, 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 what happened because there was supposed to be a sequel to the 2014 Robocop wasn't there what happened that just get canned I think it did so poorly at the cinema it didn't barely made its budget back so they went oh let's not Joel, I think with anything like that, it makes makes less than a billion dollars like oh no this wasn't the biggest film this week so we, we won't make another one I'm just I'm just quick I'm just looking at the 2014 uh film on Google and one of the first things that come up is Robocop 2014 wanted for serious crimes against cinema. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I mean it had Michael Keaton in it and he was forgettable in it. If a film's got Michael Keaton being forgettable yeah. then that's that's a crime. Michael Keaton, Gary Oldman, Samuel Jackson and I, I think Joel... either of them are in it. Yeah. Jeff Joel... Haley's in it isn't it? It's like a bad yeah. a is bad he? Yeah, he's, he's like, like a trans rival. RoboCop or something, and then yeah, yeah, I... and he has and he has robot RoboCops that he like fights him robot with, cops. and he's like, yeah, and he's like ah, these robot cops will be better than you, slightly more human RoboCop. Um, Mad... he's always oh, slagging he's... him off, but he gets gets his comeuppance. Don't worry. He was a character called Maddox. With uh, an X. With an X, exactly. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty Very good. That's that's pretty extreme for 2014. That sounds like something for the 90s. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so I mean, let's just let's hold out hope for what that could potentially be. Um, yeah, so that is pretty much all I've got for for horror news. I would I do need to double check the country and TV show news just to make sure I haven't just dropped a complete lie. I read uh, it. Yeah, if it helps. Yeah, I didn't read the, the actual story, but I read the headline. Yeah, I think that's what I did. Um, Conjuring TV series announced at HBO. Yeah, so I think that was it. I think it was just an announcement. You know, sometimes where there's like a logo. And we just yeah. Oh, and we're doing this. Yeah. And we're doing this. This is a logo. There we go. Um, so, yeah, that could be that could be pretty interesting, I think. Um, I guess we'll move on to the next part of the show, which is talking about what we've been watching, usually from the last seven days. But obviously, PJ, as you're not on the show every week, it can be any <laughs> anything at all recently. That, yeah, that up to 14. Seen. No, do as long as you like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah anything recently is worth talking about i watched the third in search of darkness film oh <laughs> yes. Yes, and, yeah, yes i love those i love those films this and they make me want to watch all of these terrible 80s horror movies <laughs> yeah i would check one off the list this week <laughs> I, think they, I, think they, I think they recently put out like an actual checklist um yeah th- that you can like download and check check off all of them um so yeah, that's very handy, isn't it? But yeah, I feel yeah. like they could just go on forever. If it said this documentary is twenty four hours long, I go yes. <laughs> I <laughs> think they are. They are doing a nineties one now. Yeah, that they've yeah. done the three eighties they... ones, aren't they? Yeah, but I think they're doing it. I think the first one's going to cover like three years, and they're going to do it the trilogy. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, wasn't it like nineteen ninety to ninety four? I think they said yeah, the first something one like that. Be. Yeah. Mm. Is it still going to yeah. be called In Search of Darkness 90s or it's like double checking that you have found darkness or something on those lines or are we on? I mean, it's going to be In Search, Search of Search. Darkness, but the darkness will have an X in the middle of it. Darksness. <laughs> darkness, yeah. And the, the 90s will have a Z on the yeah. end of it. <laughs> in Search of, is that, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, I, I get anything that jumps out from from those that you've made you really wanted to see it kind of made me want to watch uh that michael kane movie uh han, han? what's the hand mm, yeah the where he, hand. <laughs> where he hand. His hand. yeah that one stuck in my head as well uh <laughs> i can't remember the name of anything today what's going on in my brain i'm just like well you know the one with michael kane and some fingers the hand <laughs> yeah because I've, I've definitely never seen that before and i think i added that to a list Part three was the one I think that had the most films in it I had not seen because the, the focus in that one is sort of more on the straight to video ones. And there's a lot of those I haven't yeah. seen. I can't remember what any of them were called at all. <laughs> um, it was more of a, it felt like more of a deep dive, didn't it? Into, yeah. Yeah. Into Atus Horror rather than, I mean, the first and the second one, a lot of stuff that maybe you haven't seen, but there's a lot of mainstream sort of releases yeah. as well and sort of like big cult films as well yeah you're covering the main ones you know there are even in that first one though i was adding a lot to my watch list but i wasn't like oh there's nightmare on elm street now i mean i'll add that to the list (laughs) nightmare on elm street part two (laughs) i thought they'd add enough of freddy with part one (laughs) i'll tell you what karen chapter four of the friday the 13th wasn't the last one we were lied (laughs) to it comes back uh Oh yeah, there's a mega list, a checklist you can download um, and check it out. Oh, there's a letterbox list here as well, which is exactly what I want. With all three Import parts on there. Straight to it. Ah, oh, I'm just gonna fry a few here just to, because just because I can't help myself. Um, the children. That was definitely one I wanted to see. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, without warning, the sort of like alien film, um, big headed alien in a cloak. Uh, Death Ship, which I've never heard of, despite the fact there's obviously a movie called Ghost Ship. I just started looks, watching Death exactly Ship on Shudder. You just started watching <laughs> Death Ship on Shudder? I've just started watching Death Ship on Shudder. Guess what, everybody? Watch out. Not only is it uh, a slightly sentient, ghosty ship, you'll never guess who the ghosts are. Bloody Nazis, the worst kind. Oh. <laughs> they are the worst ghosts. Oh, again. Uh, Devil Fetus. Nice. Right, that, that looked good. Oh, De- Deadly Friend got a little got a little mention on there. Um, aye, aye. And the film that we... I, I've never seen this, but I really, really want to see it. And I want to cover it on the show. Trick or Treat. Um, it just looks great. With the evil... Well, I say evil. I think he's maybe a bit of a anti-hero. Crow-like figure. Misunderstood, yeah. <laughs> rock star. Undead rock star. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I could quite easily what... cover all of these films on this 
Um, Isn't Andy. one of the films um, that they mention a 1980s horror film called Dolls, which I believe mm-hmm. is about to get a screening down with your friends and mine down at the Bristol Bad Film Club in a couple of weeks? Oh, are they showing Dolls there, are they? I think they are showing Dolls. Don't quote me, but I think it's on oh, pretty yeah. soon up there. Uh, also, New Year's Evil gets covered, and obviously when we covered Bloody New Year, we were like, is there another New Year's horror film? There is. New Year's Evil. And soon, in finishing the trilogy, our internal project, which you've done no more work on apart from the title, Boo Year's Eve. <laughs> yeah, we'll get around to that. I'd watch that. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sa- I'm saving these lists so I can work for all of them. Uh, anything else at all, PJ? Is that it recently? Obviously, I did. Been, been incredibly fairly, busy. Actually, we had a couple of friends over a couple of months ago now before the baby came along for a, a horror film double bill night. We watched two films I'd never seen before. Killer Clowns from Outer Space uh, and Demons. Oh, and I nice. thoroughly Demons. enjoyed okay. both of those. They were great. Yeah. Some fantastic choices there for a mm. double bill. Um, we've covered Killer Clowns from Outer Space. We've not covered Demons, but I do enjoy both of them. Um, Demons is great. Yeah, Demons is is one of those that just has a really weird vibe to it that you I can't quite put my finger on, but that I really like. It's there are, aren't that many films that do that. The Abominable Doctor Five is another one, um, which I just really like because it's got a weird vibe, and I'm like, this is so weird. I don't know what's happening, and I love it. <laughs> um, and yeah, Demons was like that for me. So yeah, I really enjoyed watching that. We should maybe cover that at some point, Andy. What do you think? Yeah, get Demons on that list. <laughs> We've done uh, Killer Clowns not too long. It was end of last year, right? Yeah, I think it was the end of last year. Anything that you've seen this week, Andy? Let me bring you up the little list. Not all horror this week, but I have watched a couple since last week. I'm continuing to dip into old GDT's Cabinet of Curiosities for a little snack once in a while. And the latest one there was Pickman's Model, so, um, which is uh, a classic... Um... Now, I've, I've caught you'll not remember anyone's name. Uh, disease, you know, old indescribable horrors man. Lovecraft. Lovecraft. That's, I that's know, it. That's, that's the last the episode of that I watched as well. So. Yeah. You know, look at a painting too long. It'll send you all wampy. It's got uh, Crispin Glover in it. It's um, good Lovecraftian horror. Um, enjoying that series. Enjoying that series. I think it came out at a time where I think it appeared and then disappeared quite quickly from people's radars, but I've been enjoying Mm. jumping in and just watching them when I haven't got quite enough time for a movie. But I can sit and watch an episode of that, so I'm carrying on working through that. Then I got round to watching Antlers, so 2021's Antlers, the um, Scott Cooper film, um, you know, about the... It's like a Wendigo story, right? About the Mm. the little boy. It's quite sad all the way through, but um, Mm. I enjoyed it. It's good. Really, really good creature effects in it really yeah. like wonderful body horror transformations. The creature stuff is really, really good. Um, then I watched um, going back in time, 1976's Satan's Slave. Um, Norman J. Warren film. Uh, it's about a young girl who's caught up in a devil cult run by her evil uncle and cousin. Oh, it and was cousin. a... Um, yeah. Uh, no, sorry, it's two guys. Um <laughs> Uh, tell you what though it was one of those it was one of those difficult things a lot like that film i watched where grandpa joe was turning in people into horrible automaton waxwork monsters this one oh, yeah horrible cult leader it's lovely michael goff it's alfred from original <laughs> tim burton batman <laughs> oh no I think he's he has played some wrong in his time he's been horrible gaslighty cult man where it's like no 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 you just I had a bad dream. Yeah, I'll take this really fast-acting sedative and go back to sleep. Satanic cult. Nah, nah, perish the thought. Perish the thought. He's, he's played some wrongins in his time. I think Alfred's a played wrongin myself. <laughs> he made he made that Batgirl costume off his own back, uh, and he didn't even know, and he didn't even know Batgirl was going to be involved in the film. He'd already had it made, the pervert. Put the nipples on it and everything. <laughs> Put the nipples on everything, and then it's been hoisted by his own petard. When like his, is she his niece in Batman and Robin? One of his own yeah. relatives. Which is like, and he I happened done? to make it just in her size as well. Creepy Disgusting. Uncle Alfred. Yeah, creepy Uncle Alfred. Well, in this one, he's part of a satanic cult. Um, 
like I say in my letterbox review, it's all fun and games trying to resurrect your witch ancestor into the body of a younger relative. The only way to realistically resurrect someone, by the way. Um, it's all fun and games. So someone gets their eye poked out, and they do. Um, <laughs> so that's Satan's Slave. And uh-huh. then I watched Alone at Night, which was very strange. That was the last one I've got that's horror-related. It is a... It has a weird... So, it's about a cam girl who's been through a, t- a tumultuous breakup and then she goes and does not a holiday because she's still doing cam girl things, but goes to a cabin and there's wrongings about and there's a subplot which is about a reality show that's on that has Paris Hilton and loads of other people just in like a Big Brother type situation. And they are oh, completely yeah. they're completely unconnected to the murder plot of the film. But it is in it on several occasions. It just cuts away to it a few times. And they never link up. You never Wait, meet up this, with these what's characters. This, called? this is called um, um, Alone at Night. All oh, right, okay. How come? I like how you said she's she goes away, but not on a holiday. She's still doing cam girl things. So it's, the, <laughs> it's essentially like when you take, your, a holiday, laptop, just when you take your laptop. Just to When you take yeah. your laptop to a coffee shop. That's exactly <laughs> what she's doing. She's doing yeah. that, but. Yeah, I, I get what, it. What do they call that? A busman's holiday? Is that what they call it? Yeah, she's that? on a busman's holiday, still camming it. <laughs> um, but yeah, the scenery. She, she meets she meets a lot of people while she's away at this secluded cabin. Each one more suspicious and likely to be the murderer <laughs> than the last. Mm. Um, but it did get me because everyone was so heavily flagged as the murderer that I'm like, I'm not sure which of these is more more obvious. I'm not sure you've even got the script until it's until it's the very end. But yeah, the, there's a se- there's a completely separate bit with Paris Hilton and a load of people just in in a Big Brother house that they sometimes cut to, and then they'll be watching it on TV. Oh, very I've very heard strange. Of this. this is very very recent? strange. Uh, twenty 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 two, but it's very COVIDy in. That, oh, yeah. that it's made, so it's probably made during COVID. Hang on a minute. Pamela Anderson's in it as well. Oh, I. Pamela Anderson plays Sheriff Rogers. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I had no interest in it until <laughs> I've just read that. So I want to see your favourite actor, Pamela Anderson, was in it. Yeah. Um, is that a first Sheriff Rogers, I bet she does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so yeah, sorry. So yeah, probably, <laughs> I mean, probably. Uh... <laughs> Anything else, Andy? Uh, no, I watched. Oh, no, you know what? I watched Mortal Kombat Legends Snowblinds, the latest of the animated ones, which is oh, a cartoon yeah. it... where people get their eyes popped out and heads punched in and things like that. It's all right. Mm, it definitely counts. Um, I, that's that. I, and feel... I, watched, I watched Black Adam, which is tough. Not a horror tough film, but an, unu- but an unusual choice for <laughs> restructuring yeah. your entire cinematic universe around. But it doesn't, so it's okay. It doesn't. Uh, I feel bad when you come come to the show with a whole list of things that you've seen. Uh, Watch those this week... documentaries, Ben. I've got to cover. I've got to finish. I've got to undo that list. I think if my <laughs> watch list ever reaches a thousand, I'll cease to exist. <laughs> You'll just turn to dust. Um, so I've only really watched one thing of note this week, which is uh, I did want to go and check out Renfield, but I didn't get around to that. So I w- maybe we'll do that this week. I don't know if, if you fancy doing a bonus episode on that, Andy, if you're going to be able to yeah, check if it I can out. Sneak it in, I'll manage it. If you could sneak it in. Um, but I just watched Evil Dead, the 2013 remake. Probably uh, for like, I reckon this is maybe like the fifth time that I've seen it. But the first time I've seen it since apparently, according to the, to the old letterbox, I know we keep na- name dropping that website, but you know, we, we like it. Um, it's useful tool. First time I've seen it since 2019. And you know what? It's amazing, isn't it? It's, I mean, it's exactly what a remake should be. It's a, it's a reimagining of the original. There's plenty of nods where you go, oh yeah, there's the car. Oh, that line was a bit like this. Oh, this, this is almost an exact retelling of this moment, but it has its, it has its own style completely that sets it apart. Um, and it has got the most wince-inducing violence. I still think of any, probably any film. Yeah. The needle and the eyeball is, is horrific. That, that one guy. You know which guy I mean. The guy with long hair and glasses. He gets the shitty end of the stick. The the amount of shit that happens to him. He gets stabbed with a needle in the eyes. He gets shot with a nail gun. He gets hit over the head with like a, um, a crowbar. He just gets absolutely battered and still, well, no spoilers for 2013 Evil Dead, still lives throughout most of it. 
Um, but yeah, I think it's it's it, it is amazing. This was kind of like in preparation for Evil Dead Rise as well. And I guess if they keep this sort of vibe for it, which you know they hopefully will. I don't know if it's, is it is it supposed to be connected to this film in any way? Are we? I know there's like a, no there idea. The, it's loose. There are scenes yeah. in the trailer which seem to take place on a lake, um, and of course I understand that most of the film takes place in like a high rise building. So I'm interested to see what happens at the lake, whether it's like the start of the film, um, whether it's linked to, well, I'm sure it will be linked to the events of that film, whether it's linked to the events of this film, the 2013 Evil Dead in any way, because that could be potentially interesting. But yeah. Is everybody a, fan, everybody a fan of 2013's Evil Dead, the Fede Alvarez? I've only seen it once. Um, hmm. I think I need to watch it again, to be honest. I remember not being that impressed in the cinema. Felt like it telegraphed things a bit too much, but you know, I, I it, it is one of those films I do keep thinking back on and thinking, actually, I do fancy re watching that at some point and giving it another I, shot. I think it's definitely a film with, with each re watch, I've appreciated it more because I think maybe, yeah, when I watched it at the cinema, I think I was the same where I was like, I mean, it was it was fine, but did it, it didn't. Hmm. didn't blow me away but i think it's one of those that i do keep feeling like i need to re to revisit um and that that lead performance from jane levy which is kind of strange because she's not done a great deal i know she's done don't breathe but in terms of the horror in terms of the horror stratosphere she's not done that much more which is kind of insane considering in a how really great in a really big popular film. film and didn't become like a you know escalated to the heights of like a mere goth now yeah, Amir Goffer, Florence Pugh, didn't become sort of like the next big um, horror darling, I guess, which is kind of strange because it is honestly such a great performance. It's got so much going on. The fact this duality um, in that performance um, and some great lines as well, you know. Looking forward to Evil Dead Rise. Of course, we'll be covering that on next, next week's week. episode as well. Uh, will you be checking it out, PJ? The uh... at some point, I can't really get to the cinema at the moment, but <laughs> mm. uh, but uh, when I am allowed back out, uh, and or when mm. these things come on streaming, yeah, I do want to see it because I, I yeah. do do like the those original Evil Dead films and the TV show as well. I thought it was a lot of fun, so mm -hmm. yeah, definitely check it the out. First series of of Ash vs Evil Dead, but I liked it a lot. I like how it kept its extreme nature and it kept mm. its humor about it as well. I should say for people listening in, PJ's inability to go to cinema is because he has a young child to look after. He's not under house arrest for crime. Yeah, should have clarified that. Uh... He's on tag. <laughs> He's on tag. Also known as having a little baby. Tiny little baby man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that is pretty much it. I mean, apart from that, I've I've been gaming this week, so not really had a chance to watch all that much. Um, See what but... we have all had time to watch, though. <laughs> We've all put aside some some time. Uh, Our precious finite watch. lives. <laughs> exactly. Uh, to watch the movie of the week, which is Moon Trap. Moon Trap, one, all one word, uh, which is an American 1989 science fiction film, science fiction horror film, written by Tex Ragsdale, directed by Robert Dyke. Uh, and it tells the story of... Um, NASA finding the remains of an ancient humanoid race on the moon that's left behind that left behind deadly robots. Deadly robots. It's always dead bloody robots, isn't it? Uh we've got 4.8 on IMDB. Um uh, we have on Rotten Tomatoes. Not applicable critic score. There's not enough critic scores on the website uh to give us an aggregate of that, which is strange. 23% audience score. Uh 2.4 on Letterbox. Then we've got some choice reviews here. Uh, Mazin Kaiser says, still can't get over the fact that Bruce Campbell's nickname is the Penetrator. I can't <laughs> get over it, to be honest. I can't get over it. I mean, it is a weird nickname for like an astronaut. You know, I think if he was in any other line of work, you could maybe understand it. Go into space, like finding phallic rockets about the place. Penetrator is a perfectly good name for him. <laughs> The penetrator. Whatever, whatever job could you have to be called the penetrator? I mean, there's the obvious one. Um, some sort of driller. Yeah, work on a work on an oil rig. Working on mm. an oil rig. Here he comes, the penetrator. That's what they call it. That the bloody way. An anaesthetist. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty Surgeon, good. Surgeon, I guess. But is going is going deeper. Does that make you better at your job as um, an anaesthetist? 
So when they put about accuracy, donuts, I guess. Oh, what was oh, that? hello. What was that? So when he puts jam into donuts, he'd be the penetrator. Yeah, is that a you job? You have to penetrate there? them, otherwise, you just what happens? You just get it all over, all over your bakery. All over. <laughs> I thought you were going to say hands. Well, like how you gone from hands, quite low level <laughs> and isolated, to the off the whole the bakery. Off. When you're making donuts at an industrial level, I imagine when Krispy yeah. Kreme go out looking for promising members of staff, their highest performers are all excellent penetrators. Just saying. What are you like at filling things with sticky liquids? I'm actually great at that. Sorry. I get, <laughs> I get, the, I get the penetration bang on. I, I get the penetration any, any bang on. Uh, yeah, that's okay. his name anyway. That's his name. Uh, another review. So that's three stars. Uh, Mazen, <laughs> Mazen Kaiser, given the movie. Mazen Kaiser. Lily, Lily gives the movie two stars and says, at one point, I may have audibly said, why is she getting her baps out? I think I did the same. <laughs> because I think this film confused me and what I kept saying is that it, it, are we in a situation where there's oxygen yeah because there seem to be so many situations <laughs> there seem to be so many situations where people take off their helmet like willy nilly and also I feel like if you're going to get into an intimate situation with somebody where they do get their baps out I'd want to know first that there's definitely oxygen because people do just kind of whip their helmets off uh, that's two stars from Lily Two stars from Ruth, who says it's amazing how boring they managed to make a movie about fighting killer robots with guns on the moon. Um, yeah, I mean, you can't have to agree there, don't you? And But uh, as a nice cross-section, here's a positive review. Uh, Sam of the Night says, what can I say? I like zombie robot things that build themselves out of junk and spare human body parts. Four stars. So, you know, there's a nice cross-section there. Some people enjoyed it. Some people not so much. I'm guessing... This is just a guess. PJ, maybe not a fan of this one? I, no. <laughs> I did not enjoy this. I also got quite bored. Um, I think the biggest biggest indictment for me of the film is my wife will watch some terrible horror films and tell me how much she enjoyed them. She was angry that I'd made her watch this. Oh, <laughs> wow. Uh, and as somebody who, who, who has complete a shudder. Exactly. She's, she, she's okay. watched. She's must have already finished um, Death Ship, the ship with with Nazi torture ghosts on it. <laughs> I think she has. Hmm. I think yeah, this film definitely has a, a, a few parts of it where it does drag on a little bit, doesn't it? Um, and yeah, I think th- that's that's for me. I feel like when when we watch good movies, obviously that are entertaining, we have lots to say. When we watch bad movies, which are so bad, then we have lots to say. But when they're a bit boring, that is when it. We, I do feel a bit like, oh dear, right. what, what am I'm I going to say about this? State my claim in this one. I'm going to come out in defence of Moontrap, not just because of the horrors <laughs> of my of my childhood. Probably why I haven't been camping for all these years. In case of, <laughs> oh, in God. case of, like literally strip mind Bruce Campbell monster comes to try and get me. I like of all the films think... that could that could put you off <laughs> camping. <laughs> what why why do you like going camping? Is it is it sleepaway camp? Is it Friday the Thirteenth? Um, Moontrap, or any other sort of camping film, The Ritual, maybe a recent one. It's, it's Moontrap, isn't it? It's the it's the moon camping that gets me. Yeah, I mean, lovely tent though. Imagine that you get a little box out, and then Mister Soft's house comes out. You can have oxygen in there. <laughs> That's Spacious as well. Um, yeah, but um, I'm going to go out there and say, even though there are problems with the execution of this movie. Um, that have dated and were probably a bit dated at the time the film came out in 1989. As I said, only you know four years away from Jurassic Park. Um, conceptually, there's some really interesting things about this, and I would be more excited to see a remake of this or a sequel to this than I am any number of Avatar films. I think sort of in, yeah. in, in, to, and as and today, Ben, think about the and PJ, think about the. The environmental agenda and the throwaway society we live in. What greater terror than robots that come? All of that waste that you've been leaving about, all those single-use plastics you've been you've been chucking out, all those little those little things that the seagulls get trapped in at the seaside. Those little ring pools. I think if these are love robots a, came, I'd love a robot to come at me made of single-use plastics. Come on, yeah. <laughs> they could come, come, on. Come, come and build themselves up out of that. You have I to. Everyone have to get on board. 
everyone had, there'd still be an agenda though, wouldn't they? Oh, I see. Get in the <laughs> green <laughs> bin. Is it green? Is it green? Is it green for you? Get in the green bin. <laughs> gotta wash it first, but then <laughs> Yeah, you gotta yeah. Oh, you gotta take your soft plastics down the co-op because they're meant to take those. So so talking about this only being a few years before Jurassic Park, like it's a couple of years after Robocop as well. So in terms of like stop motion and miniature work, like it, it the the effect <clears throat> the effects in this film uh really do date it, don't they? Like for a while I had to, I mean I double checked it was definitely nineteen eighty nine with a couple of the effects as it feels kind of like a sort of mid seventies thing going on, right? Yeah. Definitely. Like definitely the, the, the miniature work was not the film's strongest point, I would say. Hmm. Yeah, and I mean in terms of like an actual like I feel like it should have just gone full horror, full body horror, more so than, you know, it did didn't quite commit, did it? I mean I, Andy, I feel like if you if you're gonna defend it then please please do. I don't yeah, want to be I, I think yeah, I think it could have gone a little bit harder. I think you could have done. Um, oh, excuse me, coughing, not choking up on this one. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> they could have gone a little bit further in the horror and the encounters you get with the robots. I don't think they had the the effect budget or the technology to be able to yeah have them interact very much with them, apart from you know just bashing yeah. you know bash you off screen or you do some shooting of the robots. Bash, bash but, you off screen or throw you so hard on the moon as well. Where I'm thinking, if you're thrown on the moon, you'd never well, stop. Actually. Put you in orbit. <laughs> you just put you in orbit. But can you be like obliterated, like inside your suit, like old? Obviously a spoiler, but like old Brucey gets. Yeah, I bet gets you could. All mushed. You punch so hard that you get like a mustache and beard out of blood all over your face. <laughs> That's a lovely um, new go-to you've got there, Bruce. Also, oh, no, Bruce, been, Bruce Campbell totally is completely. Damaged. Completely lacking sideburns in this movie, which I think is a disgrace. <laughs> right? Mr. Burns runs NASA. I told you, Campbell, trim those sideburns. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo- I love that there's a part in this where they're like, let's get back up. Let's get back up to the moon. I'm ready to go now. <laughs> I'm ready to go now. Like, mm. like that's how easy it is. Just set it up. <laughs> and in fact, then, and then, like, literally after a scene transition, they are just there. Yeah. Oh, like <laughs> the scene transition. Here we are on the moon. The scene transitions in this were so jarring because even bits where they're like, "Oh, we're, we've got this fourteen thousand year old corpse. Let's take it back," and then suddenly, bang, they're back on Earth. Or, or you know, we see the ship landing, don't we? But I don't know. It felt like there were big chunks of this film that were missing, like them back on the ship, maybe. Um, and yeah, them going to the moon. There was no preparation with it, and it just ended up being two guys. And then they had they had another fellow with them. I'm like, who's this guy? Had that, had that guy been in the film before? I was really no. confused when he it, turned up. The first just... time we see the first time we see him is when he crawls out under the table from under the table at the at the strip bar. What was he doing under there? Did he wipe? He was what was he doing? Giving Bruce a gobby. <laughs> What what on earth was going on? Like there are so many sequences in this film where I was just like, I feel like I've missed something. You know, you know, sometimes when you're watching a film, you're like, have I accidentally like skipped ahead or fast forward? Like, have I am I definitely seeing everything I need to see? It felt like this at least three times in this film. There were moments where I, I did briefly look down because I was having my dinner, and then I'd look <laughs> up again. And it was like weird plunge. Like, wait, have I just missed ten minutes? How long was I staring at my chicken? <laughs> and then you looked down and you had a different dinner. That was it was incredibly confusing. It was all going on. <laughs> Just imagine yeah, this is a, like this that. is a sci-fi world of the future. Can you imagine if you could do this in real life? You could be like, uh, now I have to go and do a whole shift at work. But when I get back, I'll do this. And then the next thing you know, you're stepping back in the door. Like, oof, that was good. Well, yeah, that was good. Time <laughs> traveling. Time travel, that's what sleeping is. All right. <laughs> I'm a big fan of using sleep as a time travel method. Oh, I'm gonna do this in three hours. I know. <laughs> yes. it's, it's like playing Skyrim and just selecting rest, rest. <laughs> Stand still for a minute until the time, till the time has come to be to do the thing you were waiting to happen. Sleep is just a time travel uh, method to breakfast. If you love breakfast, then you know get there much quicker. It's great. Uh, so yeah, so in terms of the cast, we've got Walter. God damn it. Koenig. <laughs> Koenig. Well, I'm just being so confused. Koenig as Colonel Jason Grant, who, um, so I do recognize him from Star Trek, who obviously plays Chekhov in, in Star Trek. Exactly the same hair as he had in Star Trek, the series. 
in like 1970, sorry, 1967 to 69, apparently. Yeah. But exactly the same hair. What What are his secrets? Because this is like 20 years and it's not moved an inch. It's that Hollywood um, hair. W- wigs. That's not the answer I want, you know? I'm sure that's, that is the answer. But... It's the only answer I've got. He's admitted has himself. He got, has he got forearm wigs as well? Because <laughs> I know I mentioned <laughs> incredibly hairy arms. But, oh man, there's something strange about him, right? And I don't want to be mean to him because how, how old was he in 1989? I don't know. Something. Okay. Um, yeah. He looks old. First of all, he looks older than that. Second of all, he looks a little bit something. like he's maybe like some sort of ventriloquist doll. He's got definitely some sort of varnish on his skin. Um, his his facial his face doesn't move very much. I'm sure maybe maybe he's had a little maybe he's had a little bit of work done. Who knows? I'm not judging him for that. Um, but I was almost more terrified of him than anything else in this film. Yeah, he's quick on the trigger and he's a, a fit man, good upper body strength. You can do the push ups to the best of them. Incredible. He was 53. I've just looked it up. 53. You see, Jesus. So, do you think he he put he insisted on having that press up scene so he could show? How good he was at press ups. I've still got 53. it. That is impressive, though. <laughs> yeah, that to is be impressive. Fair. He's going like, to beat like... that teenager, and then the te- teenager's going to be like, oh, you bloody win, dad. You're the king of press ups. <laughs> you bloody win, dad. You ble- so he's like, a... <laughs> imagine this was your dad. He's So he's like a divorced astronaut, <laughs> like a action divorced man. Astro- yeah, a divorced a bit... astronaut who's a bit like, oh, I'll tell you what. Bit of a ladies' man as well. I never got to go to the moon because I was too young in the sixties. I'm pretty too old now in the the eighties. And and a bit of a ladies' man, you know, an unexpected ladies' man. Well, lady man, there's only one lady. <laughs> okay, he's an unexpected lady man, but that sounds completely different. That's like a completely different <laughs> film we're watching. <laughs> this guy, he's an yeah, excellent crying, cabaret. It's the crying game, so isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm almost like. Oh, t- to be fair, and an action man, yeah. The fact that he goes, I'm going to take out this alien, uh, alien scrapyard thing by cr- crawling at, coming at it from from the vent. Oh, oh that, genius! That is one problem I will have with it. When they come up with that plan, we'll come to it when we do the scene. But he goes, "Hey, you got the same idea I have," and the camera focuses on the sprinklers on the ceiling. And I thought, "Oh, it's going to set the sprinklers off and short circuit the robot." No, no, I was talking about the air vent that I'm going to crawl through and then just shoot it at point blank range with Chekhov's literal gun. <laughs> it's really weird that Bruce Campbell like plays second fiddle to 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 um because I mean I guess I mean filmmaking just... at the time obviously for a sci-fi for a sci-fi property of course you're going to get the big Star Trek star to be your main guy and then what a mm. what a powerful supporting man that you know horrors Bruce like a... Campbell. It just feels like a bit of a missed opportunity, I guess. I don't know. To have him Again. being a bit more Bruce Campbell rather than just like, I don't know, a strip club man. <laughs> the penetrator, <laughs> lo- penetrator loves a strip club. Get yourself down here. Get yourself down here, Colonel Jason Grant, because I'm going to tell everybody what we've seen. Co- no one's putting into... Colonel Jason Grant would have had to pay an entrance fee to get into there, apparently. I mean, I don't know for sure, but I've been told. But... <laughs> He would have to pay an entrance fee to get in there just to talk Bruce Campbell out of whatever he was going to do. I'd be fuming. Having a chat with that. Look, I'm just trying to stop my colleague, also an astronaut, from running his mouth about the aliens that we found. <laughs> that was a weird... I mean, it is a weird scene. I mean, uh, first in- introduction, there are so a couple of topless scenes in this, and the first one is that in the strip club, and the second one, um, if you want to predict where the second topless scene takes place you never will does it take place it doesn't take place uh on the moon <laughs> yes it does uh, so doors on the moon yeah um we begin <laughs> with some lovely cost saving footage of just the moon landings right yeah hmm. just in case you weren't sure about what they look like um of course but they did find a new angle that, w- that isn't on the actual footage we all saw Oh, more and more proof they? that it was uh, that it was faked, what? let alone the sand. Yeah, because you get a little <laughs> little robot thing running through the sand on the moon, oh, yeah. watching it. Yeah, a little moon oh, tremors yeah. they are. They um yeah, as the as Neil Armstrong and Co. Um, 
Sorry, Buzz Aldrin. I reduced one astronaut to et al. There, <laughs> uh, as the as our two brave lun- lunar landers head back up to Apollo Eleven, see a little little periscope come up, a bit like R two D two when he's buried in the sand, mm. just coming up having a little having a little watch yeah. of him go. You'd be fuming though if you were those little robots because you waited waited fourteen thousand years. Just fucking missed him, bollocks. Just fucking <laughs> missed him. We're second after waiting over twenty years now. I told you not to go to the bathroom, Gary. Yeah, <laughs> they're there talking about it. Gary. Gary, you're on. You're an astronaut watching duty today. Humans could be at the moon any day. <laughs> oh, I, I, I check every day. All right, like it's not going to make any difference if I just finish <laughs> watching this before I go. I've checked every day for fourteen thousand years. I'm sick of it. All right, I'm sick of it. Well, Hold routines are what keep routines are what's going to get us. We only need one part from our from our invasion spaceship. Can you just go and look? Fine, I'll go. But I'm not going to see anyone, all right? And when I come back, you're going to feel quite stupid. <laughs> and then he goes out and he looks and goes, I really just fucking missed him. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> I, I went... That's why it's another, what, 20, 20 years before anything happens? Because he didn't tell any of the other... No, no one. Again. <laughs> yeah, you you just have to you just have to plead ignorance. Still you? no one. Can... But then I think Gary's really diligent about checking it every day after that. In fact, he goes early. I'll just go and check again. You've been so diligent. Yeah, but... Did you really take that conversation out to you with Taha? I did, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but see, I feel like I'd be the opposite. I'd be like, well, they ain't going to come back t- today. T- they're not going to come gonna back tomorrow. It's going to be another 14 or the next week. Years. It's going to be a while. So I reckon at least for the first year, I could probably just chill. Yeah. <laughs> not have to worry about it. Just go and have a kip out there. Just like that. Um, so, yeah, of course, then we fast forward 20 years later. The space shuttle Camelot is uh milling about in space um with our with colonel jason grant and ray tanner and we get some nice establishing dialogue between the two of them obviously ray tanner's having a having a kip this is where they did jason... nickname is right yeah so obviously he wakes him up first by by i don't know pressing but the self-destruct button, button. <laughs> like literally a big blaring alarm goes off again something that i don't think you could just trigger in a spaceship <laughs> um, Bruce Campbell wakes up and switches him off because our instinct, you see, like the scorpion yeah. and the fox. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I pretty switched it off. And then, despite the fact they're obviously old friends, they they compare nicknames. Yeah, what are you trying to say? You think that they would know each other's nicknames? Um, he he definitely knows he's the penetrator. You know, that's a nickname yeah. that 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 you know g- gives you a gives you a serious. Reputation, serious, 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 serious clout. The penetrator. <laughs> um, serious, there he comes, the old penetrator. Yeah, he's gonna have that like monogrammed onto all, all of his spacesuit, surely. So, yeah. So Tanner's name is the penetrator because he always used to go the furthest um, in his in his missions in all the various wars. Whereas Jason Grant's name was Einstein because he always thought about his problems. <laughs> we've, we, I know we've mentioned it already, but these are nicknames that they've given themselves. That's not the kind of nickname they would have called him: um, Silverback Gorilla Arms, or Wighead, <laughs> or, yeah. or just, or, or just his, ne- or just his last name with a Y or an O at the end. It would have been Granty. Here he comes, oh, Granty. Granty. Uh, yeah, you know they're not nicknames. Aren't usually. Uh, like that, unfortunately. Based on, maybe, maybe. based on a based on a character trait that you have. Do you know what? Actually, you always think about things. And do you know what I'm going to call you from now on? Einstein. Oh, okay, <laughs> sounds great. The thing. If they've, and if they've picked if they've picked these things up from like their time, you know, as pilots and so on, it's already quite a high octane. A, a quite surely everyone's going to have quite similar like nicknames. Oh, it's you, old piloty, old <laughs> old fly <laughs> they, fast. <laughs> They've spent a lot of time in close quarters as well. I feel like some they would have annoyed each other enough by now to give them a different sort of nickname. Heavy like heavy breather. Or stinky. Or just yeah. stinky, yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly, yeah, because especially in the sort of vacuum <laughs> vacuum packed, I nearly said that. In the little <laughs> vacuum packed areas they're in. There's gonna be a lot of human smells. Um yeah. but I don't reckon Colonel Jason Grant secretes anything. I don't reckon he sweats. Um, all those pores have been sealed over the years <laughs> all those pores have been sealed by varnish he definitely doesn't defecate um 
<laughs> I've, not, I've never to back that up. Apart from... I mean, we, <laughs> well, the, the, the evidence of the film, it doesn't. There's no part part of the film which you know does cover quite a lot of other details. Because oh, hang on, just nip for a wee. At no <laughs> point in this film. There's none of that. There's none of that. And maybe if it had that, it would have been a much more pleasant viewing experience. Uh, so yeah, they just basically stumble across this derelict, massive spaceship that's just in orbit around Earth that for some reason NASA's systems haven't picked up. They haven't what, really what picked they... up. Yeah, they're like, oh, hang on. It should be coming up on the view screen now. We'll be pretty close. And then look out the window and it's a fucking massive ship. Absolute shit show. One. So this was, for me, it was like, because the very opening, you get like um, Chekhov doing an opening monologue a la Star Trek. Yeah. And then the music when they were in space went all 2001. It was almost Sprax Zarathustra. Uh, and then <laughs> suddenly this bit is very Star Wars with the Star Destroyer and the um, the uh, blockade runner from the opening of, of A New Hope. Yeah. It was like less than 10 minutes and you've already riffed on three of the classics. I mean... <laughs> Even more so, I think my note on, and this is another niche one for you, but for me, the, the music that we get in this opening scene is very like... Sierra Adventure Game VGA point and click ad- well not even point oh, and yeah. click the adventures music. like scroll and type adventures it's like proper like PC sound card do you think that's a, just another thing that aged this film a bit was the soundtrack was a bit I mean it was a bit all over the place but it was also I don't know something about it didn't sound didn't well, it's, sound too cinematic did it it's Joseph Loduca who I'm actually a big fan of. He did all the music for um, oh, wow, okay. Hercules: Legendary Journeys and Xena: Warrior Princess, and then the early 2000s when they rebooted He Man. He did all the music for that as well, and the music for all of those I thought was great. I loved loved his work on those. So when I saw his name pop up, I was like, "Oh, I'll get some good music." Oh, Joe, <laughs> he just went. He's just, What's this for? He's just What's doing cheap rip off of James Horner and Jerry Goldsmith. Oh, oh dear. But yeah, it was just because of the title of the film. What's this called? Mo- 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 Moon Trap? Who's in it? I'll, I'll knock something up in an afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it. This is the, these are the quintessential sounds of what it'd be like to be trapped on the moon. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the ship that they have, that NASA somehow haven't detected, which is coming towards there to Earth, is a massive, massive spaceship. And Absolutely they, gargantuan. Yeah. And he, and he goes out, old Chekhov does, and he has a he has a quick look at it. They're all very dismissive of the fact it might be an alien ship. They're like, oh, silly little green men have you? It's clearly an alien spaceship. <laughs> Probably just a bit of debris or something, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it literally God. makes any spaceship that we have any exposure to look tiny, like it's the biggest spaceship we have ever seen. And it has loads of alien writing just on the side. Swampy yeah, anything. Mate. Could say anything yeah. that alien writing. Uh, yeah, and we do get that. And obviously, when they do, I know we'll get to it, but when they do eventually take what they find down to 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 Earth, we do get the, a similar sort of <laughs> dismissive sort of skepticism attitude. from people who yeah. work at NASA. <laughs> well, yeah, that, well, like they're all that. Because, look, and they only seem to give them five minutes to investigate it. So he's at the outside of the ship and he's like, how much time we got? Bruce Campbell's on the radio, Tanner. Uh, not not very much. He goes, oh. And there's like a little like a little deflated rugby ball on the that's been that's dented the side of the spaceship. She goes, Alright, I'll take this bit then. And then we better we better get on the way. And they've confirmed that that spaceship's gonna burn upon re entry. So a, di- a dented rug what a de- so if you're a dented rugby ball, uh it looks a bit like an Easter egg, doesn't it? Yeah, like a, a little... slightly melted Easter egg. Like it's just starting but... to lose its shape a bit, just getting a bit warped. Sorry, PJ. What, go on. what are the quarantine rules in NASA? Like if you're just picking stuff up from spaceships and bringing it <laughs> inside, is that? Yeah, it's like um, it's like um, carry on luggage on a plane. If it's small <laughs> enough to fit in that little box, it's then it's about the size of a rugby ball. Then it's fine. Yeah, that you can bring that in, and he goes, "Oh, almost seems a shame to only bring back that one thing." Oh, but there's nothing really out like. Unless I go in this massive spaceship, there's not really anything else I can just take in the two minutes I'm going to spend looking at it. And then as he's discussing it, like a like a corpse like floats up behind him, he goes, "Take this." How was th- <laughs> how was that corpse like still like there? Because if it's been fourteen thousand years, how was it just still floating outside of that ship? So, I mean, 
forgive and me. He's been, maybe he's sure. been orbiting it all that time. <laughs> been orbiting the ship. Is that how it works? Other maybe he only just died. Yeah. Yeah. He was this really holding I... on. And just I the kept... relief of seeing someone. It's a bit like, um, you know, when you're working really hard and then it's when you finally get a week off that you like get sick. It's like that. <laughs> yeah. Been holding on to survive all these years. 14,000 years. Yes. <laughs> Finally, some sweet leisure time on its way. <laughs> oh, oh no! All of the liquid is is drained from my body. Yeah, he's, um, he's I kept thinking there was going to be like a sort of Planet of the Apes scenario as well, where it turned out that these humans were, I don't know. In fact, I still don't know what us. that is. I've seen the film right to the end, and they no. appear to be largely human, only with different haircuts. And they were on the moon fourteen thousand years ago. And spoilers, no one mentions it. So yeah, he does. Take a moment to just go, actually, you know what? I will bring this desiccated body down with me as I'm here. And then literally, for want of only like a Transformers screen transition where like, you know, one face comes and they turn it. Maybe the mo- it could be the moon that flips over to the Earth. That'd be great. <laughs> what Bruce Campbell little... flips over to Chekhov. Yeah, <laughs> they, flip, they flip them over and... Uh, they're back on Earth now. They're just we don't a... even see them like bring the body back to the ship, do we? We literally just goes. There we go. I would have quite enjoyed seeing him dragging that little uh, corpse along. He's got time for that admin. It's like, yeah, we assume they did it. Well, and then you basically cut to a man going, "I am a scientist. This is a dead man from the moon. Science." <laughs> yeah, That's basically dead, the dialogue. Dead man from the moon, and people's like, and he, he's like, "How old is he? Fourteen thousand years old." And then sure. someone else they go. <laughs> Get off! No, he isn't. He goes, <laughs> fucking is. I checked. That's, that's I science, show my friend. <laughs> science says that this guy is fourteen thousand years old. Wow, that's pretty intense. Um, but yeah, the girl, can you ch- check? I'll show you my workings out if you want. <laughs> I'll show. You, I'll show. You, I'll show. You. Look at all this stuff I've written down here. This proves it. All right. Yeah, but there's like notes. a fourteen. That look. It's not not fourteen hundred thousand. Count the zeros. <laughs> So there's a government man who's obviously quite dismissive of it, and he's like, "I'm not, I'm not going to go tell the president this. All right, this is silly." Um, but yeah, and then they're almost like, "Let's get the back most up amazing there. discovery that has ever been made." Literally, NASA should be saying, "Yeah, we found a big old spaceship with a fourteen thousand year old dead body and this weird, this weird technology." I ain't interested in that. Aliens, mumbo jumbo, mate. It feels quite realistic though, in terms of. I mean, I don't. In terms of the people in power, maybe in the eighties, I don't know. But it feels like if that came out as this had happened, but for some reason the powers that be just went, nah, not interested. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, we just can't be bothered. Actually, sounds a bit <laughs> boring if you ask me. What's that? <laughs> the moon. I, love... <laughs> yeah. I have invested money in space travel because I'm interested in just having a lovely look at those stars, thank you. Just better pictures of that bloody Earth in the shot all the time. I don't want to go up to the moon. We've got enough cheese down here, right? And it is made of cheese, right? It's actually not made of cheese. Sorry? <laughs> what? Have you not, have well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I will, I will put money in, because i tell you what, I'm sick of the fact, when I, in, in my youth, Mars bar was 25 quid, 25p. Now, quid? Bloody, quid? Over, over a pound, oh, in, in this economy, Ben, it will be before bloody long, I'll tell you. Um, but will. yeah, the um, yeah, those people at NASA. I'm going to invest all the money to get to Mars, and then my chocolate's going to be a lot cheaper. That's what they're saying, but they're not interested in aliens. They also seem to think that they're just playing. A, they're almost like, oh, you just want more funding. <laughs> You've invented this is all a ruse just because you want more funding. You've found a fourteen thousand year old mummified man and a rugby ball slash deformed Easter egg, and you just decided that you just want more funding. You've made it all up. It's Very basically the, the scientist going, but science, and the government guy going, yes, but also bureaucracy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and as we all know, bureaucracy will trump science every single time. <laughs> so they all just agree to disagree and decide to all go for lunch together. <laughs> yeah. They're on their way right, to the now, canteen, definitely. Let's yeah. all go to the canteen and we'll leave no one here investigating this incredible thing we found. <laughs> <laughs> which is unfortunate for them because as soon as they've left it unattended the rugby Gary ball, pops out yeah Gary pops out and he's like Gary! right I'll hack this computer shall I 14,000 years of hard work of the daily computer, tasks the computer a bit you know looks at it all straight away because it downloads all the information it goes out oh, accessing information 
this is a human. So the computer actually says it's a human, 14,000 yeah. years old. So this is a human, 14,000 years old. This is what he looked like. This is what his spacesuit looked like. He was an Among Us. Um, <laughs> this is what his spacesuit looked like. This is what his spaceship looked like. Nice. It's one of these computers from the 90s where you just go, enhance. Enhance. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just fill in all the blanks for me, will you? What's that? Yeah, yeah. I haven't got all the information needed. Ah, just do it. There yeah, we go. Computer, answer this question, of course. Um, <laughs> I mean, Peter, this is one of the reasons, of course, that I chose this view. Like, how does it? How would the the good folks at Star Trek deal with uh, this kind of discovery? Uh, folks on torpedoes, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would they leave it unattended? Right unattended? They they would have scanned it, like without getting on the ship. I've gone, oh, this is dangerous. We'll do something techno babbly to deactivate the bad stuff. And now we can do more close up scans of it in our ship, and everyone's happy. Yeah. And even if someone had been foolish, someone like Data or, or Spock, depending on your series, would have gone, nah, think about it for a minute. Yeah. Do a sensible thing. And then Unfortunately. you might have had Captain Kirk having a fist fight with some guy, probably in some sand at the well, end. He'd have, been, he'd have been down at that. <laughs> the, it'd have been down at that top plus bar. <laughs> yeah, but um, they, you know, then dealt with. Forty-five minutes, boom, done. I'm out of here. Yeah, that's why. That's why they, you know, because the it's a lovely competency porn in those in those shows. There, that's why they're able to fit it into a TV slot. Forty-five <laughs> minutes of programming. And you do like people who are good at their but, jobs, you know, don't you, Andy? I do. Right. Not so much that that I dislike people that are bad at their jobs. Resident Evil, welcome to Wack Raccoon City. Um, <laughs> yeah, but um, we haven't got the benefits of the protocols of of Starfleet Command. We here. don't Instead, even have the got... benefits of the protocols of NASA. This is cheap ass <laughs> fake NASA. <laughs> it was just like yeah. bang it in a room, yeah, bang it in a room, and then we'll all go for lunch together. Well, this is the designated lunch hour. Come on. Everyone, take yeah, this man who may or may not be a scientist has said it's all fine. Yeah, he said it's fine, even though I don't trust him. So they're in the lift, and um, is it Bruce Campbell Tanner? He's uh, he plays a blinder. He uses the oh, bureaucrats' yeah. prejudices against him, and he's like, "I know that you're against sending us to the moon again to see what's what's up with this thing we found there, but." Uh, where the Russians are going to go, and the guy's like, "Fuck, these bloody Russians <laughs> always taunting me with their successful moon missions." In fact, um, I think the Russians are on their way there now. I've heard. Hang on, hang on. Sorry, I've just got to take this call. Hello. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. You leaving? You leaving? You leaving right now? <laughs> oh, oh. I mean, I'd love to meet meet you there and possibly get there slightly early, but this this guy says that. <laughs> Let me talk to him. Let me talk he to did. him. Come <laughs> here. He, he, he doesn't. He doesn't yeah. care if you get to the moon first because he likes being second place to Russia. Apparently, oh, that's it. Okay, Dossman, and, <laughs> and, and he hangs up. And he goes, "Oh, yeah." Um, what I do like in this bit, though, is Jason Grant. His his he's so desperate to get back on <laughs> back there. Well, not back there, but back into into space and to the moon. He's like, "I'm ready to go right now. I don't care. I ain't changing pants." Let's get <laughs> right back in the ship right now. Put some someone someone, on the someone, we'll someone says, I don't know if you'd be able to do the training anymore. He's like, have you seen me do press ups? Have you no, seen me? No, we haven't me? had that scene yet. <laughs> no. And also, <laughs> press ups would be easier in space. <laughs> he does kind of look like he's got like the pressures of G force on his face at constant times. Anyway, he's a bit like, oh god, I'm just constantly under G force because I'm always. Prepared. I'm always training, ready to go. Because you never know. At the, the drop of a just hat. the speed I can do a press up. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, that, and then... then the guy that says, "Oh, you've got to be able to do 100 in a minute if you want to be able to go to space." You never know when that's going to come up. Because right, get back and practice. <laughs> um. So, so yeah, the pod the pod opens up. Gary comes out. Um. And then Gary builds. He gets gets all the information from the computer, of course. <laughs> But then he builds like a cybernetic body with parts from the lab. I guess it is pretty cool that he uses like the ancient corpse as part of that body as well. That's probably the the main element of this film that I think is pretty interesting. The fact that they it uses corpses as well. It's that which sets it apart from it just being a bit of a silly sci-fi film to sort of having a bit of a horror vibe 
waste not want not is what those robots say <laughs> yeah because they could go i could just use this i could just use this bit of table for the main part of my body nah you know what he uses the table yeah. legs only when he goes stomping out the room a bit later on because mm. there is one person susan from accounts has not been invited to lunch with the others and oh, she yeah. sticks her head That's around susan. the quarantine room door and she goes Someone's pretty wrecked the computers in here. Bloody interns. Ripped all the furniture down, taken these table legs off. Calls security and says, there's a mess in here. I didn't realise that there was one of those gravity machines you get at the arcade around because he's managed to find a perfect gravity machine claw. claw. (laughs) He's like, yeah, just taking this apart there. Yeah, and now I've got the gravity claw. Perfect. It can't have been one from those machines there because it, it wouldn't have successfully picked that woman up, would it? It would have just no. like glanced off her <laughs> and not hey, picked her up properly. I I once won a cuddly toy from one of those machines. So liar. It can be liar. done. It, it can, can be done. And I only dropped 58 pounds into it. <laughs> I couldn't get a mortgage, but <laughs> <laughs> have you still got it? No, I gave it away. <laughs> I hope that person who received it as a gift no knows way. what you went through. I can't knows remember what... who I gave it to. It was like twenty years ago. Oh. What a, what a maverick that you've just won it and you just went. You know what? There's nothing to you me. I'll win another. You have it, <laughs> and you passed it to the kid who'd been trying all day. Oh no, it was a woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's a woman. A monster. <laughs> Last time a group of friends and I went to one of those arcades, we accumulated loads of those tickets. Not enough to get any prizes we as adults wanted. So we had to find the most Charlie Bucket looking, like need, like grateful looking kid that didn't have a lot to give the tickets to. And then picked our friend Haley to go and give the, give the boy the tickets because it was probably less intimidating that she, a woman, went and gave it to him. Then loads of, here, child, take these tickets. Those <laughs> tickets are insane because you, you think you've got loads you're like i've got 800 here i must be able to have like a n64 or something but no uh, you go over tube there of fizzers, and you... mate tube of fizzers and a punch <laughs> in the stomach of fizzers. <laughs> tube of fizzers. i've got no, no i've got 800 tickets can i have some please just one of them dip dabs with yeah. the... with... that's it that's all you get you can have a dip dab and a poke in the eye can i just it's not, the dip it's dab not even got not. it's not even got the lolly in it it's just pure sherbet you just go and, then, like... and it's been licked <laughs> A second-hand dip dab. <laughs> so you would be grateful for that, though. These these robots, because uh, they don't waste anything. That's they, true. They don't. <laughs> yeah, they don't waste have, a goddamn thing. That, that have made that have made the the second-hand shirt into a nice design on the on their robot face, or something along those lines, like a Wilson from uh, from Castaway. This is this there's a cyber cybernetic body thing. Does it kill that? That technician, the lady, does it just like, definitely claw, claw blood? She she walks in, doesn't have a line, and then gets killed. That's it definitely oh. throws her across the room into that wall, and she's bleeding when it lifts her up. So mm. it seems to just like throwing people, doesn't it? It slings people off. It's only got the one move. <laughs> it's, it's only it's, it's, it's spam, only in phase it's one. Spamming right now. the same move, <laughs> cheating. Um, um uh, yeah, and then and then it basically confronts. Um, everybody else who who is... <laughs> I like this scene when it's down in the basement because the scientist who did all his work, he at first stands before oh, all of yeah. the soldiers. He goes, don't go shooting it, you bloody idiots. This is the first chance we've got to meet alien alien life. And he goes, and says, all right, we um we don't mean you any harm. We're, we want to have a peaceful discussion. And the alien, like, electrocutes him, like, just zaps him in the arm. And he goes... Kill him! Kill him! In, in <laughs> any other film, it would have like blown his head off, or like it felt like a Mars attacks moment, didn't it? Where yeah, uh, we come in peace, and then what happens in Mars? In Mars, stop attack. melting everybody while they say yeah, they right. come in peace. But it just kind of grazes him. It grazes oh, him because oh, these, these is... are awful. These are absolutely <laughs> terrible. Kill him! It's my favorite jacket, dickhead. <laughs> As far as robots go, it looks really flimsy, and you just push it over, and it would have been fine then. Yeah, but they shoot look, it, it in it. They, well, they miss it a lot, don't they? Yeah, yeah. It looks like someone's it, and, it, and it's zapping them left, right, and center. It looks like someone's gr- drunk granddad, like uh, around about four p.m. on Christmas Day, trying to get back down the stairs after 
because he lives in a bungalow, so he's not used to the stairs. So he's gone all the way up, and now he's coming back down. Whoa, Jesus Christ, watch out below. He just looks and like someone's, that. And some, some of the kids have left some of their new toys on the stairs. They've all got slinkies. <laughs> it's ever so as <laughs> Bloody hell. Meccano! <laughs> <laughs> he's coming tumbling talking, down. Talking of Meccano, it does look a bit like it's made of Meccano, right? Bits of it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I bet it's it's found some Meccano in a drawer somewhere. I mean, that, surely, yeah. astro- like in NASA, loads of people would have grown up as um, you know, like engineers. Show. They've probably got Meccano <laughs> just as like desk toys. And oh, stuff, what do you so... think they build a space shuttle out of? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's where it breaks apart upon re-entry. Colonel Jason Grant, there, he's got Chekhov's gun, and he points. This is the bit I said earlier, where he points um to to Tanner and says, "Yeah, hey, look up there, thinking what I'm thinking," and I. Looks at it. He's pointing at the sprinklers. He's going to set the. He's going to cleverly use water to get this flimsily built robot to short circuit, but he doesn't. He's actually pointing to the air vents. He climbs up a ladder while being shot at quite a lot. Gets in there, and the robot seems to be able to detect he's in there. He does glance up at the air vent, but Bruce I'm Campbell sure it's fine. Him sure, it's by fine. Shooting at him more, he goes. What's that? Someone's trying to aggro me right now. I will react to that. Thanks. Um, and he shoots at Bruce Campbell, allowing um, Chekhov to use his gun. After having to hurt his poor little fingers, opening the air vent, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> pulls pulls it open and then just basically leans out of the air vent and blasts him away. Um, robot, robot defeated at the cost of only several soldiers. Yeah. The end. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> Bruce Campbell, he could have gone, I wasn't thinking what you were thinking. I was thinking sprinklers. You were thinking air vent. That could have been, we could have a, a bit of a miscommunication. I could have tried something. We could have, it could have all gone horribly wrong. Because yeah, we, we, didn't. we really need to work on our communication. We're not thinking of the same, the same mm. plans. Like we need to be more simpatico, like when in any cartoon series where one team shouts, shield your eyes as they throw down some kind of smoke or flashbang device that only the people on their team listen and go, ah, I'll shield my eyes. <laughs> so only our enemies will be dazzled. And also, it yeah. just, you know, comes out of the air event, well, how, how's that work? Well, I sh- shot it from a different angle. So yeah. that worked. <laughs> I've got I've got a shotgun, whereas you all had machine guns, that the damage output from my gun was much higher up close. Had a little weak spot up there as well, didn't it? Like a little baby's yeah, head, a little soft spot. Like a <laughs> like a boss in Zelda. He saw the flashing yeah. bit and went, <laughs> and he was like, ah, right, I need exactly. to get around the back. Um, and is now now is the sequence where Colonel Jason Grant just goes back to his normal life as a divorced, <laughs> as, as a divorced <laughs> fitness enthusiast, um. Man, <laughs> I was going to add something else. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Impec- his house is impeccably clean and tidy and futuristic as well. Yeah, he's an astronaut, isn't he? He's all about space and can probably afford a cleaner. Hell yeah. Um, his son's just, you know, watching his stories um, and then he sees his dad doing some press ups, goes over to join him for the last couple. He goes, Woof, tell you what, dad, probably fit enough to go to space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I am. <laughs> It is nice though that you know, despite being divorced, he is respectful of his son's mom. He's like, "What do you want for dinner? Do you want some burger? Oh, I'd love a burger, isn't it, Dad? Mom's into some health food recently." And he goes, well, "That's all right. It's all right." He says good for her, actually. doesn't he? He says, "He says good for her." He says she's getting into bodybuilding with her her new fella, and rather oh, than I... being, he, he could have been petty about it. He could have gone bodybuilding, eh? As he got hairy forearms like me. <laughs> no, he hasn't. His forearms are completely shaved and smooth. What a wimp. Then again, I think already like it's a bit bit of a thing when the new <laughs> the new boyfriend is, you know, the com- you're competing, maybe they didn't get on well, but <clears throat> is a space bearing astronaut who killed a robot invader today. It's a uh, bit like Yeah, but that's only that's, you wouldn't know that information. That's uh classified. Yeah. Oh, it if would... I'd done that, I would tell everybody. <laughs> Facebook <laughs> status. <laughs> said, oh, you, your stepdad is uh, drive, drives a nice car, does he? Got a nice new Land Rover series, has he? Killed a killed a robot invader today. Actually, crawled through an air vent and did it <laughs> at my job at NASA. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel that like the person years later who would suffer worse from this, despite being 
an impressive aviator and a um you know and a nice man by all accounts today is the Lois Lane's new boyfriend in Superman Returns. <laughs> where Superman comes back from space. And you know what? He's a perfectly nice guy, but it's like, well, I can't tell her ex to back off because he's Superman and could crush me like a grape. He has in this film been shot in the eye by a minigun and been fine. And I can't even take the moral high ground and say, well, I'm much nicer than him, though, aren't I? Because again... He's the he's Superman, the nicest man available. Available, <laughs> available. There were nicer men that were busy. But... Yeah, <laughs> Doctor Bernardo was was otherwise engaged. <laughs> Doctor Bernardo. I don't know anything about him. I just know he runs a charity. Might have been a real cross patch. Suspicious. <laughs> uh... <laughs> wow. Um, okay, so <laughs> he gets a phone call from. Um, Bruce Campbell, Ray Tanner, uh, and we don't hear his side of the conversation, do we? We kind of just hear, or do like, we? We got to go to the moon. Come and pick me up. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's like, are, he's, you? He's... are you? Are you? At, are you at NASA training camp? Well, yes. <laughs> he's had a skim. I mean, this booby bar. He's had a skim for, and he's apparently shouting his mouth off about classified stuff. So Jason, decides <laughs> but he has to... recruited a pilot. Yeah, and it was just a ruse as well, wasn't it? Just to get him down there. He's not actually really <laughs> shouting his mouth off. He's just, I've got to get you down here, all right? Get and then we smash right cut now. to boobs. <laughs> smash what's, the bar, cut. what's the bar called? Joey's. <laughs> Joey's. <laughs> we'll just... <laughs> yeah, he's at Joey's and he's like, I'm off to the moon, love. She has Oh, but he... No, he does, he does the quote... He does the quote, bang, zoom, straight to the moon. Yeah. You know, from that, like... 1940s sitcom about like spousal abuse. Is like, oh, I wouldn't really do that. I literally, in my circumstances, in this context, I really am going to the moon. You can come with us if you like. She's like, can you authorize that? I am just a waitress at this bar. Yeah, it's fine. Bit of paperwork. It's all good. Can you do 100 press ups? If you can, can you do 100 press ups. 50, 25. Yeah, okay. You're in. Um, and yeah, just the fact that it just goes like from all of this stuff to sun, it's it's just like it. You do get whiplash from the way smash cut the transition. to the moon. Smash <laughs> cut to the moon. There's no like preparation. There's no like montage of them training to to get back up there. It's literally just like, should we go to when should we go tomorrow? It's, yeah, there's like literally like there is like a five ten second scene of like stock footage of rocket taking off and mm. then aerial shot of moon and then well <sighs> literally then just turning the ignition off in the lunar lander considering moon. considering that like this is supposed to be a mission that could potentially you know stop an alien invasion which is how they're you've, you've got to check if there's any aliens on the moon no one stops to wonder if it's a trap of course but we of course have the benefit of knowing the name of the film trap moon free. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, I didn't make a connection <laughs> until just that moment. Uh, uh, and then what? what? So what uh, happens when they it. arrive? There's a new guy as well. That this pilot. Um, it was the guy they met at the. Well, yeah. he was at he was at the strip bar with Tanner. But we don't need to get to know him. He just <laughs> happened to be there. It wasn't like he was. They knew each other and they met there. He happened to be there and he went. Anyone? I'll fly it. Can, can you fly a spaceship? Yes. Yeah. Can yeah, I can buy a spaceship. Are you free to do it, like, now? Yeah. Yeah, I got anything on. I'm between jobs. <laughs> yeah. I've just, <laughs> just, just finished one, so I can take, a, I can take one up. So yeah, he, they're, they're on the moon. They do some fun moon stuff. Like he says, oh, I've always wanted to do this. Fall over on the moon. <laughs> yeah, there's some pathetic leaps and then falls <laughs> over and then they just get in their moon car and drive around a bit yeah we have we have Doing a little where he goes fall left that frisbee up there and the pilot's like yeah it's a fear mate i'd throw it down to you if i could but not even i, I respect the science too much to try and throw it from this lunar module to the <laughs> down oh, to the moon. A... Goes, i wish i had bought that right. i would have gone for bloody miles if i'd thrown that on the moon <laughs> You would oh, know, actually, a big if I think now. about it. I would love to have a Wazza Frisbee on the moon if I was on there. 
I like to play long distance tennis. Yes. <laughs> oh, stand so back funny. to back on the moon and you ping it all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a huge hill and they go, oh, it's lucky we got this uh, got this buggy we could take up there. Nah, let's walk up it, save the battery. Oh, for fuck's sake. Why have we got the battery, it? So we're going we're to walk there. But <laughs> again, this these the NASA, the NASA instruments that missed... That massive colossal spaceship. Yeah. They have a look over this crater and they go, down there. It's only a pretty massive base. Oh, yeah. Just about uh, 25 metres from the original moon landing site. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, what do you though, do? Just. Yeah, I tell you what, I love a base. Not <laughs> like, a, you know, not any description. It's not like the, oh, this is a factory. This is a barracks. This is like a. A base, just just a base, like ones that like you would build in a bush as a kid, or like you know, <laughs> there's an interesting shaped tree that you'd like. I'll put some extra sticks up in there, like it's a wall, not it's not. A, a they say it's like a sort of but... religious. It's got like a big chamber, like a. They say it's well, maybe like a bit religious. Yeah, it's just a big room, and he's like, ah, oh, this must have been a ceremonial hall. I'm like, how do you know? <laughs> it's just a big room. It could have been their dining room. It could have been, could have yeah. been a shopping centre. <laughs> Did a bit of moon anthro- anthropology on the way up. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of just assumptions made in there about a lot of this stuff. Um, so yeah, so essentially, it's the the ruins of an ancient human civilization. Um, and this is this is where I started to get a bit confused about where where there was and wasn't oxygen. I'm assuming when they got inside rooms, and whenever the doors you're closed. indoors, even if it's only in a tent, then there is oxygen. But right now yeah. in the great in the great hall, there's just some skeletons about in there. There's some I skeletons. I did pause to think: would you would you become a skeleton on the moon? Yeah, I was thinking this. Like, has it got the atmosphere to like break down? Like stuff, skin and muscle and all that thing. I was kind of thinking that about the uh, the guy in uh, the corpse that they found at the start. Despite I mean, he the fact was right, he, was 14... he was just a desiccated, sp- he was just like a desiccated space mummy, right? But would you become an actual skeleton on the moon? Yeah, but maybe they were skeletons you... to start with. Yeah, they were a skeleton people. A de- <laughs> but would you even become a desiccated space mummy in the vacuum of space? I don't know. Would you? His jumpsuit seems pretty like spot on. That's not been worn down too much. I've like... got a scientist friend. I'm going to message him. Yeah. yeah. Would you become a skeleton on the moon? What is you there would... any? Ask your scientist friend because there is breathable air inside. So, would there be any difference if you were? I guess it's like, would you inside decompose on the moon or outside on the moon? Would you decompose in space? Is the is the question right? Yeah. So, if you died space... on the moon, would you become a skeleton? No context. I'm just sending him that question. <laughs> Good. I have Listeners googled it, but I'd rather have an switch. episode answer for you before the end of the show. <laughs> I've I've googled it, but shall I wait for him to respond? Yeah, yeah. Wait for an official. That'd scientist. be far more interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. To, to be uh, fair, Ben, like depending on what the scientist said, you can take the role of the bureaucrat and go, "Ugh, a likely story." <laughs> <laughs> a likely story, but I'll tell you what BBC Science Focus says. Okay, <laughs> PJ um, can message them back and say, "Nah, don't we don't believe it, mate?" And he'll be like, "I am. I'm a scientist. I've checked my figures." <laughs> oh, to be fair, um, interesting. Okay, no, sorry. Uh, what's next? Um, so they have a look, and then. In the Great Hall, oh, P.S. Outside, you'll never. Unfortunately, um, Gary, Gary's mates um, have found the Luma Lander and they've they've grabbed it. They're yeah. they're in the middle of pinching it as yeah, they're Barry inside. And Larry. Yeah, Barry and Larry are pinching the Luna the Luna Lander. Um, uh, meanwhile, they find a lady with a haircut which could indicate that she's an alien um or just from a different time hang on a minute it was the 80s like everyone was out toya wilcox okay yes yeah, she, she, uh, she had a contemporary had official, official science response oh I'll okay it depends on the level of oxygen available to the microbes that would decompose you generally it's expected that you'd mummify uh but so the are science microbes. in this film is bullshit but they <laughs> but they can take the helmet off in this bit, so maybe they can become skeletons inside the 
the oxygenated structure. Especially, especially. Oh yeah, does, I suppose it would be think, oxygenated in there, wouldn't it? Yeah. If it's yeah, because they take the helmets off because they let the they resuscitate the suspended animation lady from the table that she's in. She comes out and grabs the oh, they found machine guns that were on the floor just by the entrance this, as uh, well. The, w- <laughs> The, the, Sorry, taking God. the helmets off annoyed me because I feel like a spacesuit. It should be quite hard to take the helmet off, and they're just like, no, just, oh. just lift it. <laughs> it comes off. Knock it off. <laughs> oh, that's got a bit wonky there. <laughs> it should at least have a, a couple of clips or a zip. Yeah, literally <laughs> as easy as you would, you know, drop the hood on your hoodie or take your headphones out. Oh, you might on, as sorry. well have just helmet put goldfish on. balls on their heads. Just take a plastic bag of oxygen with you out of the <laughs> know as well. Like, of the I wouldn't want to do it. Even if someone went, nah, it's fine, there's oxygen here, I'd still be a bit like, oh. mm-hmm. I mean, is she definitely, like, has she got the same lungs as us? I don't quite trust it. Yeah. I'm not sure. She, she grabs, she grabs like, the Uzis that they found on the floor and points one at them. She goes, no, 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 it's all right. I'm, we're human, actually. Watch, I can take this, this helmet off. Um, she very quickly learns their names. Which is more than I've done so far. <laughs> well, she she's she's very quickly gone on the first name terms of them, so it's Jason and Ray. She's she said Jason and Ray, and you went, who are they? <laughs> she's got her names completely that's, wrong. That's Chekhov and Ash. Was, yeah, I didn't know there was Einstein and Penetrator. <laughs> Imagine that they just did that. They thought this is a perfect chance for us to just live our lives with our nicknames. She ain't gonna know any different. Let's just tell yeah. her. It's like a Tarzan situation. Like penetrator. Penetrator. <laughs> Pen- penetra- no, don't do that. <laughs> uh, uh, penetrator and Einstein. Oh, okay. Einstein. Um, yeah, yeah, nice. Meanwhile, the guy up in the module is like, guys, guys, they don't mention they found like a space woman at all on the radio <laughs> they, to him. No, I think they say something like, they do mention like a her at some point, and somebody says, who? Who? Who's that? Who's that then? I like, swear they do. Better... I swear I didn't imagine that. Moon lady. You, you better you better get back to the um to the module. It's it's something's going awry. So there's something there's something off with the lunar module. At this point, we've seen sort of cheeky little robot legs come up there on the way to nick it. And luckily, Mira's got her her own spacesuit knocking about. Yeah. Um. <laughs> They're like, how are we going to get her out of here? She's just like there's like an under the bed drawer underneath her status capsule that has all of her clothes that she's going to need. Perfect. Um, and I can't remember if it's... Is it na- is it around about now that we establish like what these cyborgs are called? Does she, does she yes. give them any information? Yeah, she just... I think as they're approaching the location, they talk about, oh, we better watch out for these bloody robots that are everywhere. What are they called? Gary, Barry, and Larry. I got, I got nothing. I cannot remember. They, they have like a really good, like, like a really cool. on the nose, like Killiams, Killiams. Yeah, like Killiams. It's spelled like K A A, so it's like Kalium, I guess. But Killiams is essentially silly, how they say, it, isn't it? Um, I got that name. <laughs> and I think like this Killiam attack here is probably the bit. Which made this film seem more dated, because I could live with the with the robot in the in the first scene, um, in the earlier scene. Sorry, but this one just does look a bit shoddy. Pops out from the from the lunar dust, and they they shoot it pretty quickly. It's easier to shoot them on the moon. What I did well, like is shoot, the uh, the guns made no noise because of the really vacuum liked of space. That. Yeah, I was like I that. Really liked. I appreciate you know. None of the rest of the science in this film works, but that little bit, I appreciate I mean, apart that. Apart from the carbon dating, they're very confident about that. <laughs> um, 14,000 years to the day. Um, yeah, I really liked the fact that they, and they stay really consistent with it. They do, like, for example, when they're in the tent, it doesn't make noise. Oh, and they did get attacked by a spider, Killiam, in the um, oh, yeah. in the base before they left as well. So indoors, guns make noise. Outdoors, silent. And that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I will give the film that one thing. <laughs> we'll let it have that one thing. Yeah. So uh, they uh, they do that one, and then this is where Bruce Campbell's like, "Don't worry, I'm always gonna 
have your back and we'll never take any shit from no robots. Unfortunately, the one circumstance that they weren't prepared for is that a second robot would turn up and thump Bruce Campbell so hard it would liquefy him inside his suit. Yeah, he just gets smushed. And yeah, as you said, he gets a lovely bloodied, bloody nose. Mustache. But he's like, ah, you're going to be all right, mate. You're going to be fine. You're going to make it through this. The, the penetrator, that's not the attitude the penetrator would have. He'd be positive <laughs> till, till the very end. And he's like, no, I think I am done. I think I've been penetrated. I think I've way. been penetrated by the fist of this robot. So I've got no choice but to go. <laughs> I've got no choice but to go cross-eyed and die. <laughs> yeah. Bruce Campbell does an excellent dead face. He's like, <laughs> yeah, and um, Chekhov is furious and he's like, bloody typical of you penetrator to just die and leave me bloody high and dry. Yeah, he's probably fuming at it. He's like, <laughs> dead, are you? Oh, <laughs> you're such a letdown. Well, now what am I going to do? I guess I'll just put up my tent. Yeah. Oh, because they're... Well, that's all right. <laughs> because they I'm... are officially moon trapped at this point. <laughs> and also, when you've just lost, lost your best friend, I don't know about you, but I'm. Um, dead horny immediately <laughs> for 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 a moon lady uh, who has that's pretty much what happens no dialogue yet in this film other than her name and the names of the robots and done she doesn't even have to be in this film and it would be no different her other dialogue is, is exclusively names <laughs> yeah mm. and then exclusively it's like, names and then she's just like i think i'm going to sleep with Chekhov. oh no my boobies are out you should look at them yeah, mm. says, oh, gives a kiss with you. I've been, I've been in suspended animation for fourteen thousand years. I tell you what, doesn't half. Uh, I've been in suspended animation be... for yeah. fourteen thousand years, and I don't care what you look like. I don't care if your hair looks like it's been hairsprayed into place perfectly. I don't care if you look like a, a, a varnished man. Uh, but as soon as I get that suit off you, and I start to run my hands through the thick, luxurious hair of your forearms. Maybe the fifth or sixth time I've mentioned that so far on this show. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm yours, essentially. Yeah. All yours. And I suppose now that Bruce Campbell's dead, it will take out the like the awkwardness. She hasn't got to decide which one of them she's yeah. attracted to at this point. Obviously, you haven't got to... Someone hasn't got to play third wheel, because like, of all the places, if you're I mean, it's been a long time since you were in one of those situations anyway, like a teenage camping trip where it's like, oh, there's a couple that's getting together. I'll go and give them some space. If you're on a camping trip, normally just take a walk around the campsite or whatever. When you're in, when you're on the moon, <laughs> can't, can't do that quite so easily. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to go out. I'm just going to go punch a dart ne- next to the donkey field or something like <laughs> that. No, you've got to, you've got to, it's a real effort to go back outside when you're on the moon. Punch a dart next to the donkey field. Of all the sentences I did not expect to hear <laughs> today, that was one of them. Um, so yeah, but thankfully there's only there's only the two of them now, so they're free to get together in a very curtailed scene where literally she strips off, they have a kiss, and then we oh. cut away for a second, and then cut back, and it's them literally putting their full spacesuits back on. Well, that was embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> I, usually, I usually last a little bit longer than that, but you know this film is making a habit the, of jump of jump cutting through things. So we could just say of, it, it's the lack of gravity. And then what it I'll turns tell out, people is turns so, out God. Bruce Campbell has been watching through the tent's window all along. Yeah, voyeur, perv, just his perv, face, perv robot. Worry. The fact that they've kind of it, this kind of feels like they're like mocking. Um, Jason in a way by putting the face on and then making it smile um, this is the thing I would have been a lot more interested if this film had a, the robots had a bit more personality like there was something about them where they were I don't know a bit meaner I don't know they a mean yeah. robot they are pretty yeah. mean though they turn they turn Bruce Campbell into like a puppet but functionally he's mostly a robot right because it's got big old spindly robot body just mm-hmm. a Bruce Campbell face on there just for the aesthetic nature just for the aesthetic nature, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He, just, just so you can peep through that window and then give childhood me endless trauma by then <laughs> hacking into the thing. It's very lucky that they've just got their full spacesuits back on. If they were still going at it when he'd torn the when he torn the space tent, they'd have been killed by the void of space. Killed by the void of space. 
So what happens next? How do they? So they yeah. blast. They blast zombie Bruce Campbell robot away with their Uzis, and they got, <laughs> sort of stand over him and like um, old Einstein's like fucking hell, mate. Tell you what, I was disappointed that you that you died on me. Like let yourself get turned into a bloody robot. Jason just can't understand that it's the killer that have done it. He's like, what are you doing, Ray? (laughs) God, me and you were supposed to be mates. Listen, God, I can't believe I killed you twice. Got him. Yeah. Has the guy in the pod been killed yet? Because I know we have a radio message where he's like, I'm being sucked into the planet. Oh, no. Yeah, but it's fairly inconsequential, isn't it? (laughs) It's just like a weird little flash as on that, yeah. Just disappears like Team Rocket being like blasted <laughs> off. <laughs> and I think around about here was when my <laughs> concentration started to wane and I was a bit like, oh, I don't really know what's happening. So I think, yeah, I started to lose a little bit of interest around about now. Is it, focus. Is it this bit where they've, they've killed Bruce Campbell robot and then another robot turns up and picks them up and it's just these two dolls? Yeah. yeah, just just two ro- <laughs> just robots come and they pick them up like dolls, like oh, they bang their heads together so they've been knocked out. Oh, yeah. it was awful. <laughs> so they essentially get like captured, then they take him prisoner. Yeah. Having um, done an action scene, a meaningful action scene, then basically that victory is undone very quickly. Where another robot literally might as well turn up and tap them on the shoulder <laughs> and then just knock them out instantly. He's behind me, isn't he? <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Yeah, um, knocked out, so captured. So they end up on the on the ship, don't they? And they're obviously trying to put a ship back into some sort of working order. Is that right? Yeah. Well, the robots fourteen thousand years had all but one part they needed to be able to do an Earth invasion. And now with screw? the lunar lander, the screw that's all it was missing. <laughs> needed oh, a one fourteen b. Yeah. They're like, oh, right, we've got it. So. They wake up, they're chained to a wall. Um, Chekhov quickly notices, oh, it's like that, is it? We're basically being kept as spare parts. They've got their spaceship done and they're going to invade. They're going to invade Earth. Um, there is a spaceship coming, though, don't worry. Um, Earth have sent up a shuttle to try and intercept them. But that was before handy. that can arrive, they... they... They wouldn't even send a ship up to apparently stop an alien invasion. I Tim doubt that day. they would have sent up another ship... To stop, to help the two people who had... Oh. To save beloved TV actor Walter Koenig. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. He's probably on a deleted scene, got back on and said, oh, NASA, don't worry, actually, the Russian says they, they're going to come and pick us up. <laughs> I don't think so, mate. I'll, I'll send the shuttle up immediately with missiles. <laughs> um, so, they're, they're, so NASA is sending another shuttle up, but um, Walter Koenig manages to escape um horrible i quite like this robot that comes like almost like a surgical robot that turns mm. up and is mostly mm. just um using like a little pizza cutting wheel to um to slice mirror's clothes and chuck them into the furnace um but he does he kind of looks at him when he escapes he like, oh. in a in a more extreme modern horror movie would have degloved his hand to get this done but he pulls himself out of the bonds the robot looks at him and then just goes back to ignoring him while he goes and grabs a sturdy enough pipe to stove the robot's head in with. Um, he it takes bashes him a him. while as well. I feel like he milked that. Yeah. <laughs> he does. He <laughs> bash, bashes this ear robot and he goes, well, <clears throat> that's that done then. Um, should we do some escaping? <laughs> should we just climb up this big... Good... Um, this. I like the aesthetics of the giant alien spaceship, though. Hmm. Just big, big voids. It is like this sort of space that would be used for like a... Like it doesn't have like human geometry about it. It's things that scuttly robots would use. Hmm. It's also kind of weird because they obviously start the self-destruct sequence. And does it seem like they've just come to terms with the fact that they're going to die? Yeah. Until, until he suddenly realizes, hang on a minute, I could use this. Guns recoil as a propellant, like like, yeah, like a like a jetpack, because they've seen as they're climbing through this thing like, blooming hell, there's loads of those Easter egg rugby ball things here. This is mm. an this is an invasion thing. They're heading towards. This is a Earth. lot of Garys. Yeah, 
<laughs> there are not there are not enough there are not enough names that rhyme with Gary that this could be all of them. <laughs> There's gonna be at least a Gary too. What's what's plural for a load of Gary's? Gary. Gary. <laughs> Gazes. So all the Gary are down are down there ready to go. Um there's a little scene where that doesn't make much sense where the the um the shuttle is approaching. You know, oh, there's that spaceship. Fool me once, but this time I've seen this massive spaceship. And it does like a little zap at them. And you think they've been destroyed, but they go, oh no, no, we're fine. Yeah, that was out. strange. They just sort of go left a bit, don't they? When yeah. it hits Whoop. Oh no, we're all right. Again, yeah. I think any other film like would have easily just destroyed that ship or uh, another film would have like killed that guy in the in the scene when the robot first arrives um but yeah because it's a is it actually a pg-13 i'm not sure what it is i'll have to look my um, mild peril mild peril mild peril dangerous situations mm. um i can't see what the rating is on here but um so Thankfully, the lunar module that has been used to complete the alien spaceship, like all good NASA equipment, comes with like a self-destruct setting, which is fairly simple to to just prime and activate. And say, right, five minute time. But why, you know, this is why we haven't ascended to the stars as as uh, you know industrialists like Elon Musk would have us do. Not enough day to day items have easily to activate self destruct mechanisms about them. <laughs> Like yeah. bearing in mind that the ships used to go to on the moon landings had far less technology than our phones today. Why can I not prime my phone to explode on a five minute timer? Void your contract. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Once it's paid off, you can explode it as readily as you want. <laughs> that should be the email that you get. Congratulations, you've made the last payment on your phone. The self destruct code for your <laughs> asset is now the following. <laughs> Um, but they 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 set the lunar lander to to blow, um, and then propel themselves dramatically out of the of the no, thing towards the spaceship with the shotgun. We, they, there's a hole in the spaceship, and they're just sort of gently propelling themselves out. I don't think it's going to be that fast. I don't think they would have cleared that explosion. No. Yeah. But, uh, also, bear in mind that they like they have a weird back and forth with the. The NASA shuttle goes, oh, we've been zapped a bit. Uh, that spaceship's well out of range of our missiles. And then NASA go, right, if you haven't heard from them in a minute, use all your missiles. Yeah, okay. But also, surely missiles go for ages in space. There's no friction. <laughs> the range of your missiles is functionally limitless. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, I didn't think that. <laughs> like you won't be able to, they won't be able to adjust course if they run out of, out of um, like fuel or whatever, but I bet they go ages. Um, uh, and then after the explosion, again, we get a, another breakneck smash cut to Grant, uh, sorry, Jason and Mira on planet Earth. They're together, together now. They're, as a couple. They're, they're, they're a couple. She's had time to buy some dresses and some earrings. Had and a dictionary. You know, meet his son. Yeah, had and a dictionary. A dictionary. Yeah. And she's learned a bit of things. She says, how does she get shooting star a little bit wrong? A uh, fallen fallen star or something like that. Also, I don't know if I'd buy this relationship. How long did they? How long were they together for in this film so far? Hour and a half. <laughs> I don't feel like they've got. I mean, I don't know they've gone through something pretty intense, but I don't know. I don't know if I buy it. It'd be no. well annoying having to. Yeah. Maybe when you've been in suspended animation, it's like, you know, obviously it does strange things to the human mind. I'm not a scientist, PJ after messages friend, but. Could it be that she imprints like a duck that's first born? <laughs> <laughs> when I she mean, when she, when she comes out of that pod, she's like, okay, very likely. Saw you saw you first. I am, I'm in it for the long run with um with you now. And you know, old uh, Chekhov, he's on he's on he's on the rebound, isn't he? <laughs> he's it's, on it's, the rebound. His, 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 his wife's clearly moved on. Yeah. She, she's she's going out. Well, I'm going. I'm going to have, have a bloody bodybuilder, all right? What? What? How can you compare to that, Moon Lady? Forty thousand year old space woman <laughs> blew up a robot. Dating a Moon Lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dad wins. Wibble on it. 
Um, and then there's a scene, obviously, a little bit later, which shows um, one of the pods survived. I imagine it's the falling star that she... Sli- I mean, they were yeah. so focused on her getting the phrase slightly wrong. They didn't pay attention to what she'd seen. And if if one of those pods could have wished to land anywhere, a bear would have wished to land in a bloody junkyard. Junkyard, 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 junkyard. Yes! <laughs> Not the recycling center when everything's been recycled. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be a fu- it's gonna be a kaiju. This guy. Oh, it's gonna be a wicked one. And then genuinely, this is my other prevailing memory from watching Moontrap in the in the late eighties. But I came away from that film thinking, ah, I've rumbled it. This is the prequel to War of the Worlds, isn't it? They build those tripods out of all that stuff they find in the junkyard. Oh my god! R- you... I remember. I distinctly remember telling my mom that. <laughs> I went in and said, you "Oh." Did. Tell you what, Mom, prequel to it's, it's. I don't think I knew the word prequel at the time. Maybe I did. Eight, uh, maybe. But oh, <laughs> th- this is the film that comes before War of the Worlds because that thing is in the junkyard at the end and it can build itself into a Martian death machine. From it. and I also thought like Moon. What's further away from the Moon? Mars. Oh, it all all comes together. All comes together. <laughs> it all comes together indeed. Um, did you watch the the credits long enough yes. to hear the little audio clip? You did the little yeah. the little phone call where it's like, "Hey, Walter, we need you for a sequel." And Walter's like, oh, "I think you do." Oh, Daddy, I watched <laughs> this. What happens? What does he say? Did you not? Uh, no. It was basically just a. Uh, it was Walter, um, talking to. It was like a NASA official or something, mm. wasn't it? That's scientist like, again. There's a possibility of any debris that may have fallen to Earth in the aftermath of that, and they're like, ah, no, it would have all definitely, definitely burned up in the atmosphere. Wink, wink. And that okay. was it. Hey, have you checked it twice? Mm-hmm. No, nah, I don't think there's any need. Yeah. <laughs> we got Gary on done. it. He, he, <laughs> <laughs> Gary said he's gonna. Gary said he's gonna double check. <laughs> there's a human equiv- a human equivalent of Gary. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> tell Gary to tell Gary to check the local junkyard because basically we've got a very very slight window that if it has landed in a junkyard you just want to get it straight away nip it in the bud don't <laughs> leave it there unattended all right Gary's gonna check the junkyards he said something about wanting to just watch the end of bargain hunt first though because <laughs> it's 1989 TiVo hasn't been invented he can't he can't pause a live show <laughs> okay fine let him watch the end but then do check it straight away. All right, <laughs> there we go. Then that is Moon Trap. Have we got any uh, any name game, Andy? Should we explain I how have. this works as well? Yeah, go I mean, on. This, is, this is pretty straightforward, PJ. But essentially, we will give you a synopsis of a film that sounds very similar to Moon Trap, but oh, no. the synopsis will be slightly different. Um, it's usually pretty straightforward, you know. Uh, and you have to work out the title from that. Uh, with one example, you understand what we mean, Andy. Yep. Would you like to? Okay, have you got the synopsis for Moontrap, Ben, that I can sure. use to... NASA finds remains of an ancient humanoid race on the moon that left behind deadly robots. Okay, so NASA finds the remains of an ancient human civilization on the moon, and when um, a couple of people go up there, a cleaning implement turns around uh, a chair and says, hey, my name's Gary, and I'm here to say... I'm here to sweep up dust in a major way. What's that film called? Is it Broom, Broom Rap? Rap? It's Broom, Broom Rap, Rap, correct. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't add the rap bit. A few Broom million, Rap. So I do like a Broom Rap. It's because I've not been as complicated as that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so NASA finds the remains of an ancient humanoid race on the moon that left behind deadly robots... And the first thing it finds to build its body is the cutlery drawer. Um, is it spoon trap? I was thinking spoon trap. Just spoon trap. Yeah, I've not gone spoon for trap. both both sides of it. Um, okay. So, um, NASA finds uh the ruins of an ancient civilization on the moon, and horny divorcee Chekhov goes along there and finds himself um, a, a suspended in animation woman um, from another Frank Herbert written sci-fi planet um, but unfortunately not using protection while camping, he ends up with a uh, venereal disease from from her and the horrors that ensue. 
Dune clap. Dune clap. Very good. <laughs> Dune clap. Uh, I should have done both sides. <laughs> I've got a bloody Dune clap. <laughs> Sandworms. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I uh, apologise for this one. I don't know where, from where in the recesses of my mind I got this from, but uh, NASA finds remains of an ancient humanoid race on the moon that left behind deadly robots. At the end of the film, instead of crashing into a junkyard, it crashes into the head office of the UK's number one publisher of romantic fiction. <laughs> Mills and Boone Trap. <laughs> Mills and Boone Trap, correct. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Um, and it builds itself a body out of all the books coming at you. Those yeah. books are flimsy. That would not be a scary. It's a lot of them. It's a lot of books. <laughs> Just pelting you with copies of like <laughs> hunky sailors of the high seas. <laughs> um, let's have a look here. Um, after finding an ancient civilization on the moon, um, NASA sends a couple of scientists there, and actually, it's a fairly uneventful. Um, thing, but one of the discoveries they bring home is a special way to keep the male party at weddings securely fastened. Oh, to avoid it's... them escaping. It's um, it's groom something, isn't it? Groom, yeah. groom. groom keeps them keeps Blast. them attached to the keeps keep, keeps them attached to their their brides and their tables. Make sure they don't fall off. Groom. <laughs> Clasp. To give Snap. you a clue, Ben. It rhymes with trap. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes these rhymes are loose, though. Don't hit me with groom. that. A slap, groom, <laughs> groom, crap. I don't know. It's it's groom. It's groom strap. Groom strap. Groom strap. What did I say? I've, I've completely forgot what a strap was until then. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Any more, Andy? Is that it? No, that'll that'll do for today. I think I don't think I'm ever going to top June clap. No, you not. Save that until last. You, yeah, you're I not. You, you should end the podcast now because there's never going to be. You've you've peaked. That's it. I was trying to I was trying to get one with like raccoon in it, but I just didn't have the energy. Ah, uh, that, that also <laughs> questionable. <laughs> you're on thin ice. Yeah. I did. I didn't have the energy, and I wouldn't. I don't want to be cancelled on my own podcast. Okay, right. <laughs> so uh, we've got to rate the movie from A to F. Minuses and pluses are allowed as well. Classic school um, rankings. B is B is nice or as or as nasty as you like. Uh, PJ, would you like to go first? I've been thinking long and hard about this for the last minute, and <laughs> you know I've seen worse films. I can say that there were a couple of moments here and there. I was like, that's not bad. Um, I am going to go with a D. Sorry, D's get degrees. D's get degrees. Um, Especially NASA school. Oh, see, I was thinking of, I was thinking of a D. I, I wrote, I've ranked it quite low after watching it yesterday, but I've kind of remembered a couple of bits of it where I'm a bit like, but it's just that, just that part where Which things should be getting face. interested. It, the part where it should it should be getting interesting, but that was the part where I was more I was bored. I can imagine like the first, you know, maybe in the second act you might get a bit bored. But when you're like just approaching the third act and you get bored, I think that's a real bad a bad time. I know it's been it? you sitting there thinking, when are they gonna go back to that bar? You go back to Jody's. <laughs> Hang on a minute, you can't just throw a titty bar there and have it just have one scene. I want the rest of the film built around this moment. What's T-bar that? T-bar on the Top moon. Of... T-bar on the moon, baby. Top That's of the moon, goes ladies. In. This, uh, <laughs> this structure that they've got, this base, actually, uh... it's one of their greatest drinkeries. <laughs> drinkeries. <laughs> uh, you know what? Let's go for a D as well. I was going to go for a D plus, but in a way that kind of sounds a, a lot more positive than I want to be about it. That plus does so... a lot of heavy lifting. Yeah. Let's just go for a D as well, I think. Ben, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be bold here, and I'm going to go for a D+, because objectively, as we've talked about oh, it, okay. this is no deadly friend in its quality of, of robot deliveries, but I will stand by the fact that I think conceptually, this is really cool. I would love to see another 
well executed version of this film. I think the monsters are a cool idea. Something that you could get these little tiny robots, Gary and Co., coming down, those Gary coming down <laughs> and building themselves out of all this all this rubbish that you get all around everywhere. Falling in the rubbish dump, all that stuff you could do. And the fact they can use biological parts as well. You've got some wonderful yeah. horror that but you could do. But that's the thing. This. That is an ample opportunity for great body horror just there. And I just feel like it doesn't take advantage of it at all. It doesn't mm. feel like a horror film. I didn't feel kind of scared of of any of the scenarios or not even that little face coming out that that tent window. If you were camping, you saw Bruce Campbell's face stretched across a robot body. You wouldn't <laughs> I be thought in for it was a bit funny, not wouldn't scary. When it would give you a start. I'd be confused. Well, I think I would be confused, wouldn't you? I'd be like I, I just I see. Nah. I... <laughs> I'm going to make He's it my joke, mission really. to acquire, acquire the rights to this and um, make a truly horrifying story because I think you could make something really scary out of this. Haven't they just done a new one or like There's 2017? A 2017 one called Target Earth, which I haven't been able to find a synopsis of to have a quick read of, but it's not a sequel. It's um, it's not it's a sequel, but it's made to... by the same people, right? Yeah, made by the same people. Apparently they did try to kickstart a um they did try to kickstart a comic uh, that would have been the sequel PJ. I mean, you know, Kickstarter. Do you think things that you promised their boobs in should have made its money in a, in an instant? Maybe they that's the that's the issue. Maybe they, they said they wouldn't have got the boobs well in it. Yeah. yeah, no moon boobs been, this time. Because that would have been you know, we've seen those Kickstarters, they would fly. Yeah, the boob Kickstarters do sadly <laughs> make all the money. Yeah. Infinity million dollars. Oh, hmm. it's it's a yeah, especially, especially if it's already an established IP. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I would love to see something else out of this concept. So I'm going to go with a D plus because I'm going to see that kernel of potential, and see if that that plus might just get you know Spielberg or someone to take it back. Take what well, D plus you say you can work with that. Could do. He's definitely a listener. Okay. Uh. So, well, thank you very much, PJ. Thanks for joining us. Where can our listeners keep up to speed with you and everything you're putting out and new projects? Um, I am on Twitter uh, at PJ Montgomery. I am on Instagram at PJM1982. Um, other places. <laughs> um, and uh, you can also find the Measure of a Fan's Twitter page at Measure Fan Pod probably the best places to keep up with with what i'm up to but uh yeah thank you so much for having me I've, I've had a lot of fun talking about this terrible movie with you pj before you go i think the other reason i wanted to get you to come and join us for a space horror adventure the end of your projects we haven't touched on i think we should lean into it now though tell us about um about safe space safe space is um a it's a YouTube show and a podcast, uh, and it is a, a tabletop RPG live play of the Mothership system run by uh, our mutual friend Vince Hunt, uh, who guides myself and three other players through sci-fi horror scenarios. Um, and I play the ship's medic, Dr. Bill Forrest, um, and it's a lot of fun. It's a very, very dark game. <laughs> Um, it's properly properly leans into the sci-fi horror trappings. Uh, we've had the bits of alien, bits of um, sort of Geiger-esque stuff, and then sort of more uh, the Expanse type stuff as well. Um, uh, if if you've watched that show, so bits of that, and yeah, it's it's on YouTube. Search for Safe Space, or you can search on podcast apps uh, Lawbreaker Radio for it as well. You see, awesome. and now PJ, you're prepared. If Vince ever cracks out like a moon trap type scenario, you won't fall for it. You'll know how to escape. I, I yeah, I'll, I'll find my space lady and put my tent up. I guess. Yep. Yeah, you'd be like, yep, space ladies, <laughs> whack, 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 whack the tent up. Now, be <laughs> careful. There will be a second robot that comes out of the sand, <laughs> and you'll be like, check the junkyard straight away <laughs> immediately. Yeah. We'll put uh, links to all of that in the show notes as well. Thank you. Uh, there we go. So thank you for listening. If you enjoyed the show, become a patron over at patreon.com forward slash horror hangout. Thanks to our current patrons, including John Crinnan, Ben Scaife, Stephen Christopher, Laura Kendrick, Toby Miller, Lane Spencer, Ollie Child, Leslie Carlo, Julia Bilgren, Nick Spill, Troy Bursch, 
Pazuzu and Rosalind Harnias. Thanks to Taj Easton for our theme music. Thanks to ACAS for hosting the show. Please consider giving us a rating or review and head over to the Facebook group Horror Hangout Board of Advisors for more. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Just search Horror Hangout Podcast. You'll find us on there. Next week, we'll be covering uh, Evil Dead Rise, which uh, obviously we already mentioned. But yeah, looking forward to that. Very exciting. Some deadites. Yeah. Have it. Oh, Have thanks it. again, PJ. What a time. Um, <laughs> watch out for Moontrap. Oh, I should say, Moontrap, available for free to watch on YouTube. If you've been inspired to seek or avoid this, whichever one, you can do so at YouTube. <laughs> yeah, avoid YouTube. That's my advice. <laughs> That's good advice. Thanks again, PJ. Uh, Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for listening. See you next time. Bye for now, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.